Good evening and welcome to Can Hammer, your stop for 40k from the Great White North. Today's show is episode 93. It's a 40k show about the Wrath of Magnus supplement, as well as some other Chaos Space Marine goodness that got dropped today. Um, we also have a Pit My List, and we're going to be doing Skitari, so stay tuned for that. Um, that's for our good friend, uh, I think it's Ty, as I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, as usual, I'm your host at Can Hammer Chris. That's on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Logan. It's at OnePlusLogan on Twitter. And we have our special guest from London, Ontario, Mr. Dan Platt. That's me. Like, Fifth-ranked player say, in the I ITC. Like, Highest-ranked player on Team Canhammer. See, I wasn't going to say that because we got trolled for, for saying that that, 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 that. that doesn't add legitimacy because we say that you're the best player in, in the province. Yeah, that offends it. It's, it's true. Be, being the fifth-highest-ranked player in the world, and what was it, third at ETC? You are clearly a hack, sir. Stop playing this game. Yeah, I think that was, that was geared towards Kieran, and I think what <laughs> happened was I said this is the best space marine player in Ontario, and I think I was kind of doing it tongue in cheek. Like he's pretty damn good. I wouldn't say I don't know if he's the best. He could be, but I was just saying like, and then so I think that offended an Ontario space marine player, but yeah. I don't know. So we'll move on. So <laughs> our website is oneplusarmor.com. From there, you could find our YouTube channel. We do battle reports. We have a lot coming up. We have this new segment that. Uh, Darren and I have been working on where we just like do like tactics kind of article thing. We talk about tactics. It's kind of funny. What, what's the name of the we segment? About it. It's so I, good. Why are you putting me on the spot like that? I haven't heard this. It's yet. It's, this? it's advanced tactics from unadvanced people. <laughs> yeah, bro. that's what it was. I said that once, and it's in all the intros. It's really funny. I, but it's uh, it's worth okay. checking out. So uh, check out our YouTube channel. He'll get really mad at me if I don't say that at the beginning of the show. So, with that, Dan's been on the show before. We brought him on because he's one of uh, the better demon players that we know. He does quite well with his demons, so we thought, who else to review the Magnus book? Um, Dan's tested a lot of it, actually, for how new it is, so it'll be good to uh, to get his opinions on that. So we're going to jump right into the hobby segment, what kind of hobby we've been up to since the last podcast. Give it to you, Logan. All right. So I've been working ungodly hours for the past few weeks, but I managed to actually find hobby time. I have some credibility. Uh, so a lot of my stuff sits in foam a lot of the time. I carry it around, and the edges of my bases get all chipped up. You know, flock falls off and whatnot, or you know, the edges of my models get pretty pretty beat up, taking them in and out of, uh, of storage all the time. So I decided to sit down for a couple hours over a few days and actually do some tidy up on those. So I reflocked, rebased, repainted a couple of my guys, um, redid the basing entirely on a few of them, uh, I've been working on some weathering on my guys. We talked about that in the last podcast. Uh, it's gone a lot better um, since mm -hmm. <laughs> since then. Uh, Did I don't you have start sponging. Yeah, exactly. I, I used a um, piece of piece of uh, pluck foam, a couple pieces of it actually. Uh, I was doing that. It turned out really well. So I'm I'm very happy with it. Uh, it could probably be done better, but hey, you know, progress is progress. Uh, past that, just been working on building and painting up some terrain. Dan, what kind of? I know it's been a while since you've been on, but what are you working on currently? What's what's up? What's going on in the Dan the Danimal space? Like, what's going on? <laughs> it has been a while. You're right. Uh, last thing that I did, I painted a bunch of terrain for the um, Canada Canadians taking over the LVO. Uh, there's probably more words in that title than I, yeah. that I don't. Remember. Um, but that's what the last thing I did. I was I'm working on some Iron Warriors for my buddy. Uh, which is really cool because I love painting Iron Warriors and I painted a bunch of demons. I painted a bunch of shit right lately, but oh, next so that's actually, actually Glaze Army, right? The Iron Warriors? Huh? Is that McGlaze Army? The Iron Warriors? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's his actual last name. Oh, what's his? Mc McLay, like M C oh. capital L A Y. I didn't even they didn't even clue in for years. That I knew him. I just finally clicked in. It's like <laughs> you're actually from Superbad. Like that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like. <laughs> I thought it was kind of a joke. Like, I thought that was his nickname, but oh yeah, okay, that's what he goes yeah. by. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. That's the next thing. Next thing up, actually, I think is going to be some Stormcast though. I am nice. jazzing to paint some some Space Marines. So, <laughs> Different colors. Oh, you're going to be Marines. getting them ready for that tournament that I'm running that we'll talk about in a bit. I that might be where I was headed. Yeah, <laughs> not registered cool. yet. Yeah. yeah, Stormcasts are awesome. Uh, I've been working on mine as well, so segue, I'm working on a conversion, I'm still working on it, I got my Dracoth pulling my Hurricanum, oh, yes. I uh, did a lot of plastic card work on the back, because I had to shave off the legs of the rider, 
and use some bits and some plastic card kind of folded. And then I bought like a spool of chain. It's like 10 meters of chain from Michael's. And I've been using that on everything. Like uh, so he's, chain? Like small Well, stuff? it's just like... No, yeah, like an actual like big ass chain. <laughs> yeah, like a little hobby chain. And it's yeah. like I, I, got, I actually chained everything up. He's got reins, did all that cool stuff, made a custom base for him. Very nice. And then I built, uh, was it 27 Blue Horrors? Because we're going to talk about this new supplement. These guys are fantastic. They're tiny, man. I didn't realize. Like, at first I was like, oh, I'll, I, I bought those cherry kits. I was like, oh, I'll use the Blue Horrors as pinks. But they're like half the size. They are pretty so, tiny. But they're pretty cool. I'm like pretty happy that I invested in those chariots. I say investment because it, it keeps going up in value. Yeah, right? seriously. <laughs> they, they are the, the best value for money. And then I... Uh, I cracked open my silver tower set because I needed two more horrors as well as my brimstone horrors, the blue horrors out of it. And I needed this guy, which is my uh, knight questor. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to testing him out. And the theory behind him is I really struggle with that three places of power scenario in AOS where you have to, and he's got a three plus rerollable save. Mm -hmm. So my hurricanum can like chill behind him. It's also a character, so it could kind of double up but it, like I could have a wizard buff him to a 2 plus re rollable and he could theoretically sit on an objective for like the whole game that's nice. a good idea so but he's 100 points I was like ah, you know I'm still debating it but I figured I'll build him up you know once you paint models they sit on your shelf like you can just paint all day so um, I've been having trouble actually painting so I've been just building so I got almost the entire um, what's it called silver tower set built the one thing that I wanted to note and is the Griff Hounds in Silver Tower are like tiny? Yes, they really are. That's weird, eh? Like it's like a human Griff Hound, right? Because it goes with a human. It's not a Stormcast Griff Hound. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a baby. It's on a twenty-five mil. Like that guy. I use them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like it's so much cooler than like my big one where the tail keeps breaking because it's like this thin, wispy piece of plastic. But it's pretty <laughs> sweet. So that's what I've been really fighting around with and working on the One Plus Battle Reports because yep. we're trying. And I know I've already plugged this, but in the new year, we want to have a 40k video come out every week next year. So we've been we're actually good till past February. So wow, that's yeah. coming. Yeah. So I've been spending a lot of time doing that. Did a battle report uh, with Jason and just all that good stuff. So stay tuned. Next, we're gonna go on to new releases and news. So the first segment: AOS Age of Sigmar. Nothing new to report as usual. I tweeted that, and somebody <laughs> gave me a hard time. They're like. Man, in 8th edition, we didn't get a release for a year. It's only been like three months. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm just selfish. It is what it is. <laughs> but uh, they did go up for pre-order. Is four uh, battle, battle forces have returned. Yep. So they did Stormcast, Iron Jaws, Corn Bloodbound, and Sylvanath. Uh, they're roughly 1,500 points, I believe. Um, they're all different. Uh, wow. Now, the wicked thing is, is... Um, I went online and I was like, oh, okay, let's figure out the value, right? Because the Battle Force used to save you like $5. Yeah. And so the Stormcast one, so these all sell for 200 bucks Canadian. So for all you, any other country, this is cheaper, I guess. 30 bucks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Stormcast one retails $415. That's insane. So this That's is more really than 50% off insane. retail. Iron Jaws is $367.50. Um, corn bloodbound is 343 and Sylvanus is 373. So the corn bloodbound is the, the less, it's not as good of a deal as the other ones, but it's still a really good deal. I'm curious for the Iron Jaws one, does that come with the big, um, not, not Gordrak, but the, the dude he rides? Is there one of those in there? The Mock Rush? No. Uh, no Mock Rush, yeah. No. Okay. Well, okay. I have to, I'd have to look. I didn't write down what was in them because I was like, ah, it's on the website. I'm going to check but... this because that's a Christmas present for someone if it is. <laughs> Girlfriend wants to play Age of Sigmar? She likes the so orcs. Good. She likes the orcs. Ooh. But no, she's got a bloodthirster coming in the mail, so we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, Santa sent it in the mail. Yes, yes, Santa. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Oh, it comes with a giant. Okay. Yeah, well, that's the one thing is it did have an ale guzzler in it, which I was like, uh... But... You don't like those? You don't think they're good? So, it broke my heart. I like the formation where it's five ale guzzlers, and then one of them becomes like a super ale guzzler that can kill everything, that's but it awesome. doesn't fit into regular tournament play, 2,000 points, you have to play 2,500. But I, I find them overpointed for what they do. So if you compare their points cost to other behemoths, the other behemoths um, are a bit more survivable and they have more to contribute to your army. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a, be a, a behemoth for behemoth's sake is, is all fine and dandy, but, like, 
after playing my vampire counts or my undead a little bit, you know, their behemoths, for a similar point cost, a little bit more, can cast a spell, can heal wounds, can... Uh, some of them have, like, a good, decent shooting attack, uh, things like that, like re-rolls, and they have command abilities, and I just find you don't get any of that with the ale guzzlers. That's... I could be wrong, but... I can see that. It's more just a, a fighty guy. Yeah, that's all it is, right? And it's like playing the ogres, right? If you're in Age of Sigmar, if you just want to play a straightforward army that doesn't really synergize, you play, like, ogres... Um, but a lot of the other ones, like the big one is, is is Undead, right? Undead, if you played it that way where you just like three units and you just push them or do whatever, it's not so hot. You need to synergize. Yeah. And I find that as well with the Stormcast, right? Like if you're not buffing those units, they do pop really easily. Oh, for sure, and you only have, you know, so many guys. Yeah, and like Bravery 6 on an army, it's not the best, right? Especially yeah, against whole, yeah, whole armies of you know bravery ten just for nothing. Just oh yeah. bravery ten, I don't care, just go away. Yeah, I thought that was maybe a mistake. Is that there's too much bravery ten in the game? I was surprised. I was like, because especially when you're looking at like some of the order armies, there's they, there's the Seraphon, but the rest of them are just like they have just terrible bravery. And then yeah, the entirety of undead is just yeah, we don't care about bravery checks. Yeah, well the one thing too though is is like the new undead. Uh, command ability, I guess, or the army-wide abilities, reroll bow shock near the general, so that kind of helps. But yeah, it's still like you know, if you're, if 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 you know, stuff goes wrong and I lose half one of my units, that unit's generally gone. Like it's yeah. Yeah, battle shocks off the table. Well, cool. So I'll hand it off to you, Logan, for the 40k news and rumors. 40k. So first off, Wrath of Magnus, which we're talking about later tonight. Uh, and then the other chaos release we just spoke about is the Traitor Legions book. So uh, we'll very briefly talk about that uh we're gonna do a full show on that at a later date uh but suffice to say think of it like angels of death where we got the psychic powers uh we got a reprint of almost all of the formations that had come out from traitor's hate and all the chaos space marine stuff from wrath of magnus uh and also all of the um chaos legions now have their own detachments um they're not quite as unique perhaps as the space marine ones were uh, but they've all got some pretty cool abilities. Uh, a couple really jump out. Um, it, Blood of Kittens has all the stuff if you want to look at it before we do a show. Also, the book is out this Saturday, so buy it. Uh, but Death Guard, um, Iron Warriors, and uh, World Eaters? World Eaters. Yeah, the Corn One are, are my uh, my top picks for that. So check them out. They get well, some cool let's, stuff. Let's do a bit, a bit more than that. So what's your, which, which one speaks to you the most out of that? Death Guard. Oh, always Nurgle for me. Uh, so what, death, why, what do they get? So, what, like, if I'm a Death Guard player, why should I buy this book? What bonus? Do all I get? right. So, this has a really cool thing in that it makes Chaos Space Marines not suck for like the first time in years. Uh, so, basically, the way it works is for the attachment bonus, if you take a Death Guard army, uh, so think of it like chapter tactics. Every model in the army that can take Mark of Nurgle must take Mark of Nurgle. Okay, plus one toughness. Great, not too bad. And every model that can take Veterans of the Long War must take it, but for free. And Veterans of the Long War gives you Feel No Pain and Fearless. So you have basically cheaper Plague Marines. You have one, you know, you don't have Plague Knives, but otherwise you're, you're Plague Marines for, I think for an entire unit, it's about four points less per model. So 20 point Plague Marines instead of 24 points, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then that carries over into the Detachment, which has a Warband, so you get... Objective secured, like toughness six bikers with feel no pain, and for the attachment bonus, you reroll ones on your feel no pain. Uh, so you get a massive army of toughness five and six models that are all fearless, all obsec, all have feel no pain, and all reroll ones on their feel no pain, which is it's pretty good. Cool. It's pretty solid. Like it's no gladius, but it's got a hell of a lot of staying power. Oh, yeah, and also yeah. you get stealth if you're more than eighteen inches away from the thing that's shooting you. So it's not bad. Yeah. So Nurgle bikers are are actually pretty pretty nasty. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing in this book that addresses the fact that Chaos Space Marines don't really have any good weaponry. Um, so, some of the stuff is really weird. Like, Iron Warriors get, uh, I think it's reroll barrage weapons. And I may be mistaken, but I can't think of anything in the Chaos Space Marines book that actually has barrage. No, That's not true. really. The, the, only, the only thing that does work on, that, for that way, like, my buddy plays Iron Warriors, and he, he wants to work so bad. Um, the thing that we did find was uh, they in their detachment they get an auxiliary which is one to three form, uh, fortifications. Yes. And so you can burn those and use those to like get some barrage in there. And uh, okay. But you're right, they they really don't have barrage or very little ordnance because 
you know, if they if they allowed Forgel into the you know DOFs, then we'd be good to go. But so that's um, that's an interesting I'll, point. Is these are um, a lot of the bonuses. I think that one is a detachment bonus. But for the the general bonuses, like the the Death Guard one I was talking about, where you get the feel no pain and fearless for having veterans the long war. That's just if you if you take this as effectively your chapter tactics, right? Uh, so you don't have to use the detachment for that. The detachment is what gives you the extra bonuses. So if you don't want to use these, you still get a huge number of the bonuses, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, like the Iron Warriors one, for example, just flat out you get obliterators as troops. <laughs> so yeah, that's quite cool. pretty damn good. And uh, and you get the uh, what do they mutilators. call it? Mutilators. Mutilators. <laughs> yes. In there, run them in. <laughs> Um, did, uh, also, uh, actually, the one cool thing about the Death Guard that uh, I might have forgot was that uh, they get relentless. Yes, they do. It's really cool, like yeah. walking up with bolters, you know, your Havocs walk around, blowing people up with glass cannons. That's actually pretty sweet. Yeah. I like that a lot. It's solid. Well, it's, it's huge because you can basically, like, that's the downside of last cannons is you yeah. just get shot turn one. Well, yeah. mine are hidden behind a wall. Now they jump up on the wall and they're going to cap you, yeah. right? Or move, move around yeah. in rhinos, right? Because they're, they're OPSEC, yeah. they're OPSEC Havocs, OPSEC Chosen, right? You toss your last cannons or, or plasma cannons or whatever on these guys and you're cr driving around the table blowing things up. Oh, yeah. Because Chosen well, get uh, up to heavy four. weapon and three assault, right? Uh, they get up to four heavy, four. He four heavy weapons or special weapons, yeah. And then uh, you can also even even just something as simple as you know just double tapping bolters before you charge in. Yep, like that's that's not bad. That's it's pretty, pretty great. Not bad. Pretty yeah. great. Now, is there any other ones that speak to you, Dan? Or or like so the Iron Warriors? Like if you're an Iron Warriors player, are you going to see a lot of people just using uh, something else and just painting yeah. their stuff Iron Warriors? Or what are you thinking? They've got some cool stuff. They get Pino Pain Six Plus, so they're kind of like the Iron Hands of the of the of the you know Space Marine variety. Um, but they have they have some cool stuff. The Oblit troops are very interesting. Their Picurian has some cool stuff, but they're not like the stars. Like um, I'm pretty sure the Death Guard are going to be the White Scars. You know, everyone's going to be playing yeah. some version of Death Guard, right? Yeah. Um, I really like the Emperor's Children one. I'm I'm totally stoked about that one. It sounds awesome. Um, but so just give know, a brief it, brief summary for anybody because it's 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 yeah. not even out yet. The book, so yeah, just that's a true. Quick... Um, the, what's really cool is they, they all gain 6 plus Fiona Pain, which Ooh. is pretty cool. Um, and again, they have to take Marcus Slanesh if you can take it. They have to take Veterans if they can, but it's free. Um, and they can't take any other Marks, just like all the other Decurion, or all the other, uh, uh, cult troops, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they gain 6 plus Fiona Pain, they gain Fearless, which is fantastic. Um, and the 6 plus Fiona Pain does actually stack with their banner. Um, so you can take a 20 point icon that gives them 4, four plus Fiona Pain. Yeah. Very solid, very cool. Twenty man uh, units too, man. That's pretty good. Yeah, man. And that that icon slanish only. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that's a very cool one. Um, the what's the other thing that they get? Oh can yeah, you take multiples every... of that icon. I, you can, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Every squad can take it in theory. So. So you can take twenty man units with a four plus. That's not terrible of Marines, yeah. man. Obsec. Not bad at all. Uh, and fearless too, right? Because you're just gonna sit there and never leave. So, that's what I used to have to do on my when I was running my crapper cast list is you have to take the icon to make them fearless or, or take like a lord in them so this makes it a lot better yeah for sure um, the other part is that if they had kind of a wolfen rule where that if they die they automatically get to hit once before they are removed from play so that's pretty cool oh. too there's an extra hit you know they and they're already striking initiative five right because all they're all plus one initiative mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty good and then their decurion or their, their their main formation the cacophony formation is a whole bunch of noise marines, and it's like six, three to six squads. They get split fire, which is amazing on noise marines. Yes. Um, and you get, uh, I think you get shred too on all your noise attacks, which is fantastic. And the other cool part is if you take six of, like, if you take six squads, you get plus one strength on all of your noise weapons. Oh, so six, right? Oh yeah. Go. I think it goes to strength five on the regular guns, and then strength nine on the blast master. Oh, not bad. Okay. Not bad. Yeah, it Not sounds bad. actually pretty cool. Um, the Black Legion is also very cool because you can come in. They get they grant you reserves coming in on turn one if you deep yep. strike. Um, there's well, a that's really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's worth noting for anyone who uh, enjoyed running corn berserkers <laughs> in the past. Uh, the the world leaders formation does have something for you as well. Uh, basically, pre uh, when the game starts, so after infiltrators, but before the game starts. Uh, every non-vehicle unit gets a free 2d6 inch move, which is 
pretty awesome. You combine that with the Maelstrom of Gore uh, formation thing. I think it's what you can run and charge, and you get an extra six inches on your run and charge. So you've got a very effective potential for a lot of turn one charging with that, which is yeah, it doesn't kind of nice. Yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's huge. You can't shut it down. Infiltrators you don't care about. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. The one that spoke to me is they're kind of crappy, but infiltrating cultists for the Alpha Legion. Oh, the Alpha Legion one was amazing. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Did you see their crazy relic that they got? No, no, I didn't get to go through it and find details, but uh... they have a relic. It's like thirty points, right? You can exchange your regular move to immediately move three d six. Oh, it, you can move out of combat too, right? Jumps you out of combat. Yeah, it jumps you like it goes anywhere. That's it's awesome. actually totally sneaky. It's very cool and very Alpha Legion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it was way too much fun. But even that, like, I was like, well, if you're going to take, let's say, an allied detachment of something, or a CAD, and you're going to take, like, the arbit- like two cultists, and you don't really care about having a special character, because that's one of the things you need. You can't take any unique characters that aren't Alpha yeah. Legion. Mm-hmm. There's no Alpha Legion characters, obviously. But So, like, a lot of people just take, like, a CAD just to throw in, like, a Mauler Fiend's kind of popular, just so they can buff it with their Grimoire and, like, distract people with it. Like, there's a few weird things you could do. Mm-hmm. You add the Infiltrate there, now... Your fifty-point cultists are also fulfilling the the role of the skulls and the Imperium in that they just shut down the scouting Death Stars. They can keep people back, which might be very important in a Chaos Space Marine army. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. So, cool. So all in all, you guys, ten out of ten on this supplement, or uh, too, late, too late? As a supplement, one hundred percent. As soon as they release a new Chaos book, it'll be great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a, thing. that's that's a big part, right? Is it's not changing the main chaos book minus a couple things. They're supplementing the way you can play the current chaos book. Um, so I mean, it's not a top tier book, but we could easily see one of these builds do really, really well. Yep, yeah. absolutely. I'd, I'd I'd give it as, again as a supplement, like Dan said, ten out of ten um, in terms of overall, like a, a seven out of ten probably because it takes chaos space marines and it it. It hugely buffs them. Like let's yeah. <laughs> let's not not get this wrong. This is like a huge power boost for them. Uh, but I don't think it's enough to bring them up to you know even like the level of Necrons or or you know the the lower top tier armies as it were. I don't think it gets them quite close enough there to really be competitive. But at the same time, uh, these guys move up from being like bottom table to to mid table heroes, which I think is pretty great. Cool. Just my, the only thing that disappointed me is that, and it makes sense. Is that the buffs only apply to things with veterans of the long war? Yep. So no cultists. Which it doesn't apply to cultists. Or doesn't spawn. apply to spawn yep. and lots of cool things that I like to run. So, but that's yep. my only complaint. So I guess we'll move on. You guys hear about the planetary onslaught book? Yeah. So it's an amalgam. Yeah, look- it's amalgamation of planet strike, cities of death, and uh, stronghold assault. Right. It's got some updated data slates in it. Uh, clarifies some of the wording on the void shield, which is really nice to align with the new FAQ. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I think it's it's largely just a, a reprint of the three books in in one for a you know a big discount in comparison, which is pretty cool. Well, and it's, yeah. it's those books are what six that so they're old. Yes, yeah. So it's been moderately updated. Yep. Yeah. The one thing I did hear is it's going to apparently I haven't read it myself, so that's what I've heard. But I heard that you're allowed to a, potentially take one of the generic like terrain pieces like the Basilica something or other, or the Shrine of the Aquila is the big one, for like 20 points in hmm. your fortifications, which is actually pretty useful to have a giant line of sight blocking piece of terrain for 20 points. Yeah, seriously. Um, I, if that's in there, I haven't, like I said, I haven't run it myself, but if that's in there, that's a, that's a 20 points I will happily spend. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. It's so important with a lot of armies. Yeah. Cool. And then, so they also did Battle Forces for the Space, uh, sorry, for the 40K universe. So again, these are two hundred dollars Canadian. They did Space Wolves, three hundred seventy-six retail, pretty good. Tau, three twenty-seven retail, and I was like, wow. When I calculated that one, I was like, ooh, Tau got shafted. They're the cheapest one, and then the Admech one was three hundred sixteen. Ooh, yeah. And then Death Watch is three forty. So it's pretty good. They're still not quite fifty percent off, but around the sixty yeah. point percent off still price point. With with GW, you can't complain about thirty-three percent off, right? Like that's that's enormous. I love it. Like. I almost ordered the Death Watch one just because <laughs> I have the two. Bo- Do I have both? I I think I have one of the board games. I, I want to get the second one for the Eldrad model, and it's like you order this kit, and you just have a Death Watch army now, which is pretty yeah. solid. And the other cra- thing that amazed me is I went on the site earlier today 
So normally when I find out about these things, they're already long gone. None of these are sold out. Like, you can still pre-order them. <laughs> yeah, so I'm incredible. sure they made a lot of them. Yeah. But they could also be, what they do sometimes with the Christmas bundles, if you happen, I have ordered some in the past, is you actually get, it's the boxes are all separate. Oh, that makes sense. You just it's like a one click bundle, and I think that's cheaper for them for packing and storing. So oh, well, it all almost definitely, out. yeah. So any any other cool forty k stuff that uh, you guys have heard about or, or came out? Uh, there's all the Zinch stuff that came out recently. So there's a new Aramon model, uh, Rubric Marines, Occult Terminators, the Exalted Sorcerers, and the Zangors. Yeah. Oh yeah, Magnus. Like Magnus, Magnus. Yeah, we'll talk about him today. Demon Primarch. Primark, I know. Primark. I, I think we got yeah, three for those in the last one. So, uh, oh. so I think we talked about those figs. But yeah, he's oh, yeah. cool. The one best part about Magnus, which we didn't talk about, was his. He, he's actually playable without his armor on. Yep. Oh yeah. Like, oh, that's all the pictures I've been seeing. Yeah. Yeah. With his big so perky nipples. He, yeah, he's one hundred percent sculpted, and then his armor is a separate layer, like, kind of like a Ken doll. Actually, he looks like a. a he, jacked does, up he does Ken look doll, like a man. jacked up Ken doll. It's true. Exactly like a Ken doll. I've never seen it. I don't even know. I can't believe anyone's seen any different. Don't give people ideas. <laughs> yeah, what, what wings on your Ken doll? But he does, man. He's got like the perfect chiseled, like. Sh- sh- but it, he's perfectly detailed. And then, yeah, the armor you can just snap on him, so you could magnetize that. Be like, well, I want him in Age of Sigmar. Pull his armor off. Done. That's really cool. You could do other things with them, but yeah, we're gonna leave that <laughs> to your imagination. Done, done. D- does he have AOS rules? I'm guessing no. No. no but no. you could use him as like a demon prince or something. That's what I was saying, Lord yeah. of Change yeah. or, or something like that. Needs. But he's so big that like. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess in a lot of a lot of my Sigmar tables don't have big terrain anyway, so. <laughs> but he's gonna get shot by a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Several. So move on to event spotlight. So the first one is two weeks from now. We have. Yeah, Power Fist and Psyker 6, actually next weekend, uh, December 17th. Uh, so 16-man, three-round RTT here in Ottawa. Uh, it is sold out. Sold the last ticket yesterday. Uh, players' packs are all printed up, along with the prizes and everything. So uh, look forward to seeing everyone out there. And if you're in town and did not sign up, feel free to drop by. It is at Multizone in Gatineau, just across yeah. the river. And I'm sure if you get on the waiting list, somebody might drop or whatever. No? Like, you have a waiting list still, right? Uh, there is no wait list for this one. Uh, surprisingly so this is the first time we moved over to doing uh you must prepay to get your name on the list and that slowed down <laughs> sign ups quite a bit uh but it's good because every event we've run in the past where we've had a wait list uh the wait list has ended up being non-existent as of the day of the event so uh, it's good that we've got you know the number of people we we're expecting that's the way that the advice if you want to run a tournament don't put people friends fam whatever if they're really good friends of yours and you trust them just say man it's easier if you just pay because it cuts back on your administration you know if they're on the list they've paid i don't have to chase people down i don't have to mark it i don't need two spreadsheets whatever and it's also it just keeps people accountable you know you can offer a refund or whatever but it just i found that the second i started doing that yeah it slows down the reg and a lot of people will check your site oh it's full and then they'll never check back whereas because i was talking to a guy was it sean at the last pnp and he said the one before sold out yeah, and he like didn't know that he could have went to it, but it actually like it didn't really sell out, and then people dropped, and he could have played right. Yeah. So yeah, it's just um, easier this way. And then the next one, we have the Can Hammer Sigmar Holiday AOS Party, which is December thirtieth. It's an AOS ITC ranked event, which is going to be awesome. We have, I, I put ten spots on the website, but we're only at like six or seven people right now, with a few more. That's without Dan, who's obviously coming and. Mike and possibly Tristan, so we could get up to twelve people, which is pretty good for Age of Sigmar for rankings points. Nice. It's in uh, Cambridge, Ontario, at Forbes Hobbies. Mm. It's December thirtieth. Three games. Um, all the information's on Canhammer.com. Just select Canhammer Sigmar Holiday Party. I did go out and buy awards for it too, so I got custom hockey pucks. <laughs> so I have a best overall, best in faction, best painted. And maybe best sport. I can't remember if I did best sport. Um, but so actually, if you think about it, twelve people. If you're the only guy there with vampire counts or undead, you're getting an award, man. Cause yes, I gotta come make, now. <laughs> do an overall and best in faction. So that's what I, I kind of like to believe in. It helps to split it up. Um, there's that, and then the next one is Canhammer Team Tournament went live December first. Um, I think we announced that a few podcasts ago, yeah. but. The registration went open, and we sold out in nine minutes. So we had 40 paid players in nine minutes. It was 12.09. 
Um, I was actually in bed, and I was like, ah, you know, I, I'm not going to have to worry about this too much. I'll get like four or five people will sign up, and then they'll all come in the morning. And my phone like exploded. Yep. Uh, so I had to go downstairs, and I, I logged everybody in. And then we, um, we hit the maximum capacity of our venue, and we decided to expand. So we've moved to the Oriental Portuguese Hall. Which, if you go on their Facebook page, it's miserable known reviews. For, like, there's all these like one star reviews for bullfights, but the hall's supposed to be great. It's just <laughs> that a lot of people are really upset about bullfights and techno music. So, but that's <laughs> that's not going to be happening when we're there. So we're good. But we've no expanded. Problem. Yeah, no problem. We expanded we're to eighty players. Yeah. Well, if there's a bull there, I'll fight it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to die. But uh, so we've expanded it to. Um, 80 players, which is uh, 20 teams. We have 16 teams fully paid, which is 64 players. We are listed as a major ranked event on the ITC website. Ooh. And so how we're going to do the rankings is because it's it's ETC style, which is four-man um, players, you all play singles games. We're basically going to rank people on singles performance again as per last year. Yeah. We just thought that that would be fair because there are a lot of people that are taking, um, like, you know, they want to take their club and they don't want to be on a, a competitive team. Whereas if we made it ranking solely, so if it's a major and it's solely based off of a team, we, we, we were worried that it would cause too many teams to be stacked and then we'd have a big void there. So this will allow people to, you know, you can show up with your friends, you can win all your games, your team, your, your team can do quite poor, but then you still get decent ITC points, which is, it's it's not perfect, but it's it's the, the best we can do. So the trick is to bring three scrubs, so you're playing bottom tables, but you're beating everyone the entire time. Yeah, it, if you can do it. I like but, it. Uh, so that'll be pretty good. we got four spots left. Uh, we are expecting those to sell out in the next month, probably by the new year. So if you are interested in bringing a team, bring one. I do know that uh, there's possibility of a few t- teams uh, like that are being put together. So there's one team I know is coming, and they haven't registered yet. So if you want to go, definitely um, get signed up. And I'm going to do a call out to the Barry guys. If you're from Barry, you guys got to get a team together because you guys aren't seen anywhere besides Barry. So you guys got to get your ass moving and get down to a real <laughs> event and play some real players. Sorry. Harsh. <laughs> Harsh. Uh, because, yeah, I like, I, Sorry. Get down they here. want us to go up to Barry and play in there, but they, they aren't coming down here. So I'm calling them out. Get a team together. No, the yellow well, bucket came down for the for Weeds tournament. Don't give them any credit. Okay. Sorry, guys. I tried. And and so their team name could be the Berry Bashers. I don't get it. I don't uh, know. Get it. I like it. Starting at the Berry Bashers. I like it. Ah, the Doc. Cool. Kid. And then so I guess uh, Dan, do you have anything to say about the ETC team or anything like that that you want to cover? Uh, the ETC team prep is is uh, going quite well. Um, thanks to our captain and uh, fearless leader. Um, <laughs> no, it's going really well. We're all uh, we're all quite motivated. We've nailed down a lot of what we're planning to do, um, and we've actually included a lot of uh, some extra people in um, in our planning process for like you know contribution of ideas and you know concepts and stuff, um, which is great. Um, so yeah, I guess if you feel like there is anything you can do to support your ETC team, like we're going and we're representing Canada uh, as best as we possibly can. Um, so yeah, if you feel like you want to support your Warhammer community and send the ETC team uh, to Spain, and we can you know kick some European ass, we can use as much support as you can give us. So I guess email canhammerpodcast at gmail dot com. Canhammer dot podcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, right. Yeah. Can I give you guys like back rubs? Will that help? Is that a thing? That well, the best. I'm down. It was, it was actually really sweet. So we created this side group. It's 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 still private because a lot of what we talk about has to be confidential. But um, there's a, anybody that applied to be on the team got let in, and then we're letting people in that kind of want to be in and want to contribute to the team with a slight vetting process. We're looking for U.S. spies, of course. And I think it went like re- we had a couple of people in there really contributing. And so what I want to say now is, is if you're interested for 2018, you should probably start trying to get involved or getting in with us this year because we did have a few applications this year, and we had no clue who these guys were. And we had like a month or two to make a decision, and some of the and you know we have never seen them at an event. We didn't know them, so that maybe was negative on their application. So 
you know, but some of those guys now we're going to be running into them at events. We're going to be seeing them. We're trying to make practice days. So if you want in, it's very important that you uh, email us. And you, if you're not from Ontario, you're from BC, like, you know, as long as we know who you are, we can watch what you're doing and just be aware that you exist, which is half the battle, I guess. Yeah, come talk to us at events. Just say, hey, man, I, you know, we're, I want to go to ETC. How am I doing? You know, how are you doing? Like, what's going on? Just come talk to us. Because in the end, it's a very social thing, and that's a, that's a big part of the team gameplay aspect, right? You need yep. to have a, a compatible group of people, um, yeah. which is, yeah, super important. So the better we get to know you, the more likely you have the chance of getting on the team. Yeah, and, so and you know what? Play armies that are different. Like, yeah. one of the issues we had this year is we had too many town elder applicants, and it was actually a real, it made it for a yeah. real problem, so. It was tough, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. So that's it for ETC. If you want any more info, you can email us, and we'll keep you informed. We're actually going to dr- uh, take a, one thing Sorry. I want to say first, just before I forget, uh, fun fact for the Chaos Space Marine stuff, since you're talking about people playing new and different armies, any of the Chaos Space Marine stuff and Hematrope reactors, because you can stack a ton of plasma, especially for the Iron Warriors with the uh, Obliterators as troops with some Hematrope reactors. Yeah, that's a lot of blast. Yeah, that is. 36 inches, two man with a wall there. Dun, yep. Done. done. It's good stuff. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Um, we'll be right back, and we'll talk about the Wrath of Magnus.
And we're back. So we're going to go through the new Wrath of Magnus supplement. You know, we're going to go through it fairly detailed, but we're going to skip over things that are maybe repetitive or that we've covered in the past. Uh, like there's a, all those, they've reprinted a lot of the Psychic Power Lores for Chaos Space Marines. We're not going to go through, or Disciplines. I keep saying Lores. Uh, we're going to not, you know, skip over some of those. We'll just kind of try to keep it to the new stuff and the game changing and give our takes on it. So the one interesting thing about this book is it's the part two of the um, kind of campaign supplement that was brought out, yep. the Fenrisian supplement. So this one's kind of cool. It gives you the Thousand Suns. It gives you Chaos Demons. And so the one thing that kind of bothers me, not bothers me, is that this is like almost a reprint of the book that's coming out this weekend for the Thousand Suns. Yep. So it's a lot of, like, I don't know what's changed. Like, it's, is Magnus only available in this book? No. All of the Chaos Space Marine stuff that's in this is also in the Trader Legion book. Um, the only okay. thing that's unique to this is the Demons, which is a bummer for Demons players because it's an $80 book. Uh, I, I bought it. I'm a Demon player. I'm a, I am I like Chaos Space Marine. You so. get the digital edition, though. It's usually it's a probably a more reasonable price, I guess. Because the, the, the supplements the, the, the two-book pack, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's like it's it's like sixty dollars. What I started doing for people that um, is, if you go to Costco, you can buy iTunes gift cards for like eighty something dollars for a hundred dollars, and then you just tell all your relatives <laughs> that all you want for Christmas is iTunes gift cards, and you tell them to go to Costco, and then you end up just getting like five hundred dollars in iTunes vouchers, and then you can buy all the books as they come out. You are such an addict, Jesus. <laughs> I go to Costco weekly. I don't care. I, I, I gotta save two bucks on my on my score of new GW books. <laughs> I got kids. I, I gotta go get diapers, man. I go to Costco all the time. I like it. But for those of you that are frugal, I am Italian. You know it is what it is. But anyway, so this supplement they give. So we're gonna talk about the Thousand Sun stuffs now, and then that means we don't have to talk about it. It'll make our next show shorter, yep. and then we'll talk about the demon stuff. So we're gonna go right through. Um, the first thing is they. They go right into it. They give you new rules for existing characters that they re kind of release models for. So who wants to take? Oh, I'm not even gonna say this right. So this is the Thousand Suns book. We'll get to their army rules at the end. But is it a Hearman, Armin, 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 Arch Sorcerer of Tizunch, of, of, of Tiznach? Okay. You know Abaddon. You know who Abaddon is, right? Yeah. It's actually Abaddon. Abaddon. Yep. I, I learned. I learned oh, yeah. that from our. Uh, Oh man, I'm drawing a total blank on his name. Painter dude. Search of the D. The GW painter guy. Mr. Duncan Rhodes. Mr. Duncan Rhodes. Oh, there we go. That that's <laughs> that's how I learned that it's actually a badden. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a so common, much from that guy. common thing is I think the Brits when they they basically say the words as they're spelled and it makes more sense cuz if you say it a badden, it's easier to spell if you don't know how to spell. Like that's what I found. Like urinal, like you can actually spell urinal. that now instead of like urinal. Ap like you... I don't even know what that is. So. Apothecary. So who wants to take? Who wants to take Aramon? All right, I'll, I'll get Aramon here. So uh, this guy is actually really, really easy to talk about. He is exactly the same, but now you can buy him a disc of Tazunch, um, which is awesome. So sale Psyker Mass Level Four, which is pretty cool. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know this guy, we'll just go through the stats. So. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 5, strength toughness 4, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 3 attacks, 3 plus save, with a 5 plus invulnerable save, which goes to a 4 plus from his mark of, uh, mark of Tazini. Uh, champion of Chaos, fearless, independent character, veterans of the long war, wee! Uh, Warlord trait is master of deception, which is pretty nice. Uh, generates his powers from Biomancy, Malefic, Divination, Ectomancy, Geomortis, Heretech, Pyromancy, Sinistrum, Telekinesis, Telepathy, and Zinch. Whew, that's a mouthful. Uh, may okay. take a disc of Zinch for 30 points, uh, which is new. Uh, unfortunately, his base cost didn't go down to reflect that. So if you want him on the disc, which his new model comes with, he is 260 points. Uh, and his special thing is his Black Staff. Uh, Black Staff is plus two strength, AP4, melee force, and it allows him to cast the same Witch Fire up to three times, which is pretty cool. And of course, if you take him... Uh, a thousand suns rubric marines become troops options instead of elite. So that's that's pretty awesome when you can take telepathy. Yes, you can shriek three things. You can terrify a unit and then shriek it three times with one dude. Yep. It's Do you see great. this guy having a place in the army, or is uh, he just too expensive? I looked at him and I was like, man, two sixty for him on a disc. Woo! He's a lot of points. He's 
he's a lot of points and he suffers from the same problem a lot of uh, marked chaos stuff does in that it's very very hard to put him in a unit that makes him worthwhile um, that said, we got a couple local folks who run Armon, and he's he's scary, man. Like, he's a force to be reckoned with. Problem is, he's slow moving. The disc really helps with that, but the disc means you're tossing him in with, like, a unit of bikers or something. Um, so you're still a pretty, pretty vulnerable unit. Cool. So next is they've created Exalted Sorcerers. We'll hand off to Dan, because he's used them a few times. That's true. Um, these guys are actually very cool. Uh, I like them a lot. They're they're pretty much the standard pattern sorcerer from before, um, but they get a few extra bonuses. They get the Inferno Bolt Pistol. Um, they get a 5 plus invol, which is nice. Yep. Uh, from Veterans Long War, level 2, Fearless, Independent Character, Veterans, all that stuff. Um, they can go up to level 3 for 25 points, like standard, and then you can take it. These guys can take a disc. So going 12 inches in the move phase, fantastic. Turbo Boost as well, awesome. Because um, you can jump out uh, you know, do your psychic power ridiculousness, and then turbo the line of sight, which is yep. fantastic. Yep. Um, the other, the one that, the thing I like about these guys quite a bit is they get a functionally, they get an orbital bombardment. So once per game, they get an unlimited in the unlimited range, uh, strength 9, AP2, blast, lance. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's great. You know, I really like them. Uh, they are a little bit on the pricey side. Uh, they start at 160. Yep. Uh, but they do have three wounds, which is pretty good. Oh, they're beefy. Uh, I mean, they're basically chaos lords with like one lower weapon skill. Yeah, yeah, no, they're they're solid. Um, and like, so they go up to like two fifteen when they're decked out. Um, but again, they can generate their powers from all of the chaos stuff, like thirteen different books or something. I don't even know. So one um, thing, one thing worth noting on these guys, and and actually for Armon, because uh, I know this question came up a lot when I was first taking a look through this book, uh, the rule about having to roll on your Chaos God's table for at least one power has not gone away, sadly. So, no psychic focus for these guys. Which is a yeah, little bit of a drawback. Yeah. they get Chaos Focus? Do they get that? I uh, believe that is only demons that get Chaos Focus. Well, if one of yeah. you guys can look oh, it up. So, th yeah, they're basically just Thousand Sun Sorcerer's Discs. Awesome. Next unit is Zangors. Or... To Xanner Gores or <laughs> to Xander Gores, Zanny Gores. <laughs> They're seventy points. They're basically cultists, but for plus two points, what you get is you get uh, I do believe plus one leadership, plus one toughness, plus one weapon skill. You get a six plus invulnerable save, and you get um, a relic uh, hunter, which is basically you reroll to hit against units with the relic, which is kind of a cool rule. It's something new, but really, or are, are, you know. There's a formation of these guys that we could talk about. You could run, you'd, you'd have to run them in quite large numbers to be making use of that relic hunter rule. Yeah. Um, but tough, toughness four goes a long way with a with a small unit in the backfield, trying to trying to stay alive. But all in all, personally, a lot of my lists preferred cultists. But there's something new. Yeah, uh, the, if you were taking like marked cultists, these guys are are a good swap in. Uh, so you're taking Nurgle marked cultists because now you're getting an invul save for them, uh, which is is actually it's not a is it an invul save? Yeah, because it's Marcus Zinch. Yeah, so you get, yeah. you get your invul save and toughness four. So if you were using let's say Nurgle cultists before, these guys were a no brainer to swap in. Yeah, and the uh, weapon skill four too, I think. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, nice. Just keeps them alive. Uh, yeah, a little bit longer, right? Yeah, it's not bad because. So the next one, Rubric Marines. Rubric Marines. Let me just bring them up here. If I can find them in my book. Well, uh, I can do them. So yeah, go for it. Basically, they're Thousand Suns Marines. They got standard Space Marine profile. They have the Infernal Bolt Gun, which is AP3 Strength 4, 24 inches rapid fire. Um, that's about it, really. They come with an Aspiring Sorcerer, who in this unit is a level 1. For 150 points, you basically get one warp charge and a level one sorcerer, and of course, he has access to um, the Zinch discipline, which yeah, will only the Zinch one. We'll talk about the better one later. Yep. They're fearless. They have their six plus invulnerable save, and then they get, of course, buffs from the formation and things like that. Uh, they can take a bunch of different I um, upgrades and icons, but they're basically Marines. They die like Marines, and they're expensive. They have That's a four, my kind of four four, uh, four plus invulnerable save. Yeah, which yeah. can be... Sorry, I think yeah. you said 6+. plus. Yeah, it's a, they have a 4+, plus, which is pretty nice. 
from the mark, and then they go up to a five plus. Yeah. So yep. six, four plus. Yeah. 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 And they uh, their base leadership ten as well, which is a nice nice little bump there. Yeah. Um, but I think the the cool thing with these guys is the weapons, right? Because they can get AP three bolters, AP three flamers. It's not bad. They it's have... cool. I just it's a hundred and fifty point space marine unit, right? Like like. What's that word that you always use? Volume of fire. What's that word that, that people hate? Vo- use? Volume of fire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you know what I mean? Like they die to bolters the same as regular marines. Yeah. But they're really expensive and really good marines, and they can kill other stuff like AP three. But um, that's an issue that I had. Um, the unit that I like better than these guys is the occult terminators. Who yes. wants to take that one? I'll cover those because I got them up right here. The occult terminators are are pretty badass. So. These guys are 250 points for 5, which is a little steep. Uh, weapon skill uh, through toughness, 4. Uh, 1 wound. Sadly, the rumors were wrong. <laughs> uh, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 10, 2 plus save, 4 plus invulnerable save, which is pretty damn durable. Uh, they also come with the Scarab Occult Sorcerer. Uh, the Sorcerer is level 2 base, which is pretty awesome. And the Scarab Occult Sorcerer can generate his powers from Biomancy, which can make this unit pretty durable, which is nice. Well, uh, he can do all of them, right? Biomancy, Demonology, Divination, Ectomancy. Oh, there it is. Demonis, it goes on the next one. Radical yeah. Pyrus, can... Mancy, Sinisterium, Telekinesis, Telepathy, and Tiznachian. Yes. So you basically get uh, you, you basically get a normal Chaos Sorcerer Mastery Level 2 as part of this unit, which is So this is what is I want to talk about. So I, I looked at this unit and went, oh, 250. I went, wait a minute. Chaos Sorcerer is 60 points, um, 85 points with um, level 2, which is yep. what you get here. So you go, okay. And then Terminator Armor, I want to say it's like 20 points, right? I think so. You're looking at like 108, 105 points. So actually, 145 points buys you 4 Terminators with a 4 plus and vulnerable save. And they have combi bolters that are AP3. The only downside is that they come with power swords. If they had like power fist stock, I'd be like all over these guys. But yeah. the the power swords like oh yeah the power the power swords a bit of a a bit of a tough sell. Uh, but yeah, but so they it's, come it's... with veterans of the long war, which is five points per character. So that takes yep. so I actually I was looking at these guys. I was like, man, these guys are actually a bargain. Whether or not they're competitive or not, they're cheap. Well, yeah, like, and, and it's, they are. It's worth noting. I mean, the unit's two fifty, so you'd think, as Chris said, you know, you'd think fifty points a pop. The terminators themselves are only forty points to add to the unit. So effectively, you've got a ninety point sorcerer who is the equivalent, you know, with the mark of Zinch and everything, of about a hundred and twenty point sorcerer. So these uh, and these guys are super durable, right? You put these in the Zinch attachment. We're going to talk about. You've got effectively assault terminators, right? But that are also psychers with AP three guns. <laughs> Well, no, they don't get plus one of their invul in the formation, do they? Pretty sure they do. No, that's actually that uh, if, they, if they're hit with a blessing. It's sorry. Period. If you if you're affected by a blessing, you yeah. just get plus one invul. Yeah, that's so all the time. Force. That's not in any formation. Yeah, you'll always have a blessing because you just cast force, yep. and you have the three plus invul terminary units. Yep, not yeah. terrible for two fifty. And well, the, the one thing that we're going to get to is one of the core formations that's so good is uh, Magnus and three of these terminator units. So. That, that's why, right? Uh, so we'll move on. And I saved this one. I had Dan written down in the notes for this one. Magnus the Red, your your boy. Magnus the Red. He's We, he we, is... we let Dan on. We got to spoil him. He gets to do Magnus. <laughs> he's uh, he's the monster. Like, literally, he's a monster. Um, he's a flying monster creature. He's a character. Um, and he is almost sevens across the entire board. He's got one bonus strength and one less attack. Uh, Leash of 10, 4 plus save. Um, so he is durable. He's super durable. Top seven is a big deal. It's a it's a very Huge. durable thing. Like fuck you, smart missiles. Sorry, language. You can still Sorry. win on a six. <laughs> yeah, still win on a six. I'll take it, man. Yeah. I'll take it. Um, he's a demon of Zinch. He's, he's got deep strike, eternal warrior, fearless, fleet. It will not die. And then the big one, he's psyker mastery level five. Yeah. Uh, officially the strongest psyker in the game. Very cool and appropriate, obviously. Yeah. Um, he's got. A couple other big abilities where he knows all the powers of both Zinch and Change, which is super powerful, as well yeah. as he knows the Gaze of Magnus, which is we'll crazy good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, he has oh yeah, he has a dozen other abilities. He has a four plus involve. He also ignores all perils, which is fantastic. Yep. Um, he harnesses warp charges on twos, which is way too cool. And he also this is the best power. I think this is the most powerful one for me. 
is he ignores line of sight. Like, he has line of sight to every unit on the battlefield yeah. when determining yeah. target psychic power. With his whispering eye. Strong. Yeah. <laughs> With his whispering <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's what the Gaze, uh, uh, gaze of Magnus obviously is, actually. <laughs> that's the whispering eye. Yeah, she just yeah. Summons, summons the giant vagina. No, yeah. Now, one other cool thing this guy's got is talk, talk about his, his weapon. Weight of Magnus. Oh, it's got, you know, it's a strength user AP2, melee force, soul blaze, transmogrify. So it's a force weapon, which is fantastic on a monstrous creature. So that's pretty cool. And then transmogrify is the one where if you do a wound, they turn into a chaos spawn or you, something. You kill someone with it, turns into a chaos spawn. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Most of falling six. down. Oh, no. Yeah. The Sigmar has failed. It's turned over to the chaos. It's only if you roll a six to wound. Ah, there it's you go. It's only if you roll a six to wound? Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Your, yeah, post, your poster's just trying to support us, man, for the Chaos Day. <laughs> and he's crazy. And he's also a thousand... Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> so for those of you that are only listening, Dan had a Sigmar poster behind him that's almost on the floor now. But they just fell over and now Chaos is showing. Is and crazy. the best part is is that he, he also has um, Veterans of the Long War. So if he... Because we haven't talked about the Thousand Sons Blessings. We'll, it's at the end. We'll get to that. But basically, if he's affected or if he casts one blessing on himself, he's... Going up to a three plus in ball. Yeah. Yep. And he's so doing deep, deep, deep seven eternal so warrior rolling ones. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Um, yeah, Super he's a powerhouse. He, he probably will be on the ground. He's going to run around being a gunboat, blowing people out of the sky. Yeah. Um, he is very cool. Very solid. Very interesting. He's, oh, the other part, he's 650 points. Yeah. yeah. So he is the majority of just about every single army he's going to be in. Yeah. Um, At first, I thought he was cheap. I looked at that the point cost, and I was like, mm, "That's cheap for what he does. This guy's crazy." And then I started list building with him, that's and right. it's that's very, tough. very, very hard to fit him in yep. because you need so much tax, which we'll probably get into later. That it's like he ends up actually being like a thousand points and like three kill points because you got to take crap so that you can actually take them. Yeah. Right? You're, lo- you're yeah. looking at a hundred and sixty point tax minimum to get this guy into an army. A hundred and sixty five points. Which is yeah. which is tough. So I mean, eight hundred points to get effectively one model. Yeah. So we'll move on to the War Cabal. This is um, so they have a Decurion style. This is one of their core formations within that. Um, we'll go through the total one at the end. So the War Cabal is basically you get you get one of the following: you get Demon Prince, a Herman, or Armin, or I'm just retarded, Exalted Sorcerer, a Sorcerer. And then you get one to three Exalted Sorcerer, Sorcerers, Rubric Marines. Um, sorry, and then one to three rubric marines, and then one to three occult terminators. So for a core formation for a decurion, you're taking a terminator unit, a rubric marine unit, an exalted sorcerer, and like another sorcerer. Um, now what these guys get is they get favorite of of uh, zinch, which is in through all the formations. Which is if you take the maximum number of units, they gain the demon. You reroll ones on your saving throws. But you always need like nine units or something like that, so yep. it's kind of ridiculous. It's almost so you're awesome. never going to see that. Um, and then the other thing is, if a psyker from the War Cabal successfully manifests a psychic power, um, uh, the psyker in any War Cabal unit he's a part of our join can reroll failed to hit rolls of a one until the start of your next psychic phase. So it's a nice bonus because you have the Terminators; they have a, a sorcerer in them. They get to reroll ones if you, you know, cast, but. All in all, that's the weakest of the core formations. So I'll hand the next one off to you, Logan. Sure. So next up, we've got the War Coven. That's uh, a good one. So this is one of the following, yep. Demon Prince, Exalted Sorcerer, or Sorcerer, and then three to nine units of Exalted Sorcerers or Sorcerers. So again, they get the favorite of Tizunchi. Uh, and then also, they get Prospering Cult. So before generating powers for the models in the War Coven, you must choose a single cult of Ancient Prospero from those listed below. All units in the formation that can't belong to that cult and harness warp charge for those uh, warp charge points on three plus when attempting to manifest psychic powers from their cult's associated psychic discipline. Uh, so basically, this means you can specialize in biomancy, divination, pyromancy, telekinesis, or telepathy on these guys, uh, and then harness warp charge on a three plus, which is pretty awesome. So if you yeah yeah th- this is basically a Zinch version of um, the thing. Uh, yeah, cabal. <laughs> Basically, well, it, so, similar to a cabal. It's better and worse than a cabal, right? Yeah. yeah, it's better in that you harness better, but you don't have a spell that like wrecks armies. Well, you can, right? 
We'll talk about that. I guess that. you can. We'll it's a different one. We it's a it. different one. Next one. I'm going to take this one just because I love this one. So Dan can have the next one. Sorry. The Zangor Warherd. This is my favorite formation in the Chaos Space Marine part of it. Um, it's one sorcerer or exalted sorcerer and three units of Zangors. Um, and then you can take an additional zero to six units of Zangors or Chaos Spawn. Everybody knows that I love Spawn. I have 18 of them. Um, so what, what they get is they get Fleet, which is huge. Not for the Spawn because they already have it. Um, but the Zangors get Fleet. They, uh, uh, <laughs> Zangors from this formation can run and charge in the same turn. And if they roll a nine to charge, you get plus one to their strength and initiative for the fight phase, which is okay. I'm more interested in the running and charging part, which is pretty good. And then favorite of Zinch, if you take maximum number of uh, units, you get to reroll saving throws of a one. But of course, everything in this formation has crappy to terrible saving throws, so you would never take it. Now, my theory with this was, in um, from my point of view, I'm into like the spawn and things like that. I would take a CAD with all my spawn in it, so they could be Nurgle. And then I would take the Zangors to back up the Nurgle spawn instead of Cultus. I just feel like three units of Zangors is better than Cultus because they're fat. They're just as fast as my spawn now. So fair enough. Yeah, because they get fleet from this. I get it. Hmm. So we'll give the Sekhemet Conclave to you, Dan. Sekhemet Conclave. It's pretty cool. So it's uh, it's one. First thing first is uh, it's one of the following. It's all the psychers, including Magnus the Red. So yeah. Armin, Human Prince, Golf Sorcerer, Sorcerer, and Magnus the Red. Uh, this is one of the ones that everyone kind of flocked to to say, like, this is the way you get Magnus in the list. Uh, and then the other option is three to nine of the Occult Terminators. Um, the game Fear, probably best rule in the game. Uh, <laughs> they love to give Chaos Fear, man. <laughs> so good, so good. Um, if you, uh, just like all the formations, or just like almost all the formations, um, if you max out the detachment, like if you take all the possible units, you get to reroll saves of one, um, which, I mean, you're probably not going to do with these just because they're a little bit po- like points heavy, but if you did, you'd have an entire army of Terminators with two plus saves rerolling ones, or three plus involves rerolling ones. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Actually, that would be amazing. Right? Like nine units of Terminators is like... It's it's 2,000, like it's 2000 points. 2,250 points. Oh, well, my, minus two fifty, but yeah, it's it's two, it's, and it's then, roughly two thousand points, yeah. Cool and then idea. you've got Magnus, all right? So twenty twenty six hundred and fifty points. <laughs> yeah, they should really just get Magnus for free at that point. I would be okay with. It. <laughs> you take nine spots of Terminators, you can have Magnus. That's, that's, that's your bonus. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so sorry. If you max it out, you get to reroll saving throws of one. Um, and the other cool part is if uh, any unit um, from the Conclave, which is within six inches of two of the other units, gains plus one tough. So you get tough five Terminators, or you get a toughness eight Magnus the Red. Yeah, that's the one I like. So you could draw yeah. them down against like certain armies that spam strength four, and now you're like, okay, kill all my Terminators, or Magnus lives, and then he goes into you. Yeah, man, no, a tough eight could be a big deal. This, again, if you just take three of them, put Magnus down, that means you know Riptide Wing probably should not kill him. At T8, yeah, no. that'd, be, that'd be tough. Yeah, Especially so, with the three up. Yeah, three plus, it's three one. Damn near one. impossible, yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's something. That is definitely an option. It's a little bit on the points heavy side, um, but it is pretty cool. But you even could have six rolls on something, right? Like telepathy or something to keep him alive, right? Make him invis and yep, yeah. one man Death Star. This is this is my favorite core formation in the Thousand Suns, but Wait, it's also core? hmm. I didn't see this thing was core. That's cool. Yeah, so this is like, you can take this in their Decurion plus one other formation of sorcerers, and you're good to go. Nice. It is, um, what is it, with Magnus, it's um, 13, 1450, wow. so it is like almost your entire army, but it's 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 less of kill points, I guess, if you're worried about that, but I guess we'll see if I'm wrong about that in the future, but like about the, I'm pretty sure it's core, but it otherwise... Is. I'm, it is, Yeah. So the next one... Aramans exiles, Logan. Close enough. Close enough. It's All right. Aram- it's it's so Ar- Araman, I think. Anyway, it's uh so so Aramans exiles. So you get Ar- Araman, <laughs> three to nine exalted sorcerers. Uh, so pretty psychic heavy, which is nice. Uh, so Araman and all models from this formation are within eight inches of him. Harness warp charge on three plus. So basically a mini lib conclave with Araman, uh, which is pretty cool. And, of course, if you include maximum, you get to reroll saving throws of one. So this is a great way to just get a whole bunch more mastery levels in your list. 
Um, I think this one's an uh, auxiliary for just about everything in, in the Decurion, um, or in the in their detachment. Uh, but if you're looking to get Armon and some sorcerers, it's a perfect way to, to add them to a list with with no tax. It's 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 maybe the if you want Armon, but if you don't, it's it's. It is expensive for how ineffective I think it could be. Yes. So I guess it, it, it a good comparison would be like the uh, the Dark Angels Librarius Conclave, where you're, you're yeah. paying the Ezekiel tax for it. Yeah. Well, the next one, Dan's actually ran in his list, the Rahati War Sect. Oh, I didn't actually, just, so I, just for clarity, I didn't actually run it. This is just something I was throwing around. It does sound fun, though. Oh, I so, thought you played it versus Tristan. Uh, sort of. Anyway, I didn't actually. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. uh, so first things first, the formation is Magnus the Red. Which is cool. uh, and then three to nine, either Demon Princes or Exalted Sorcerers. Uh, the one stipulation is that everybody has to be boosted to Master Level 3 if possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, you know, an extra 75 points at minimum on top of, ma- like, base cost. But that's, that's not bad. Master Level 3 is a good thing. Um, again, if you max out the army, you get reroll saves of one. Pretty cool. Uh, but it. the big one, um, it, while you're within 18 inches of Magnus the Red, either the Demon Princes or the, and the Exalted Sorcerers uh, harness on 3+, plus, quite good, and they ignore, they have line of sight to everyone on the board again, yeah. which is fantastic. That's, that's such a good ability yep. um, for, for you know, how many reasons you can think of, you know, blowing up people off objectives, you know, killing warp spiders, anybody hiding behind corners, yep. amazing stuff. The better yep. touch red. Yeah, it is. Yep. So I actually, this is this allows you to do the five model list: Magnus, four Demon Princes, all level three, all Zinch, all Wings, yep. um, and then you have forty points left over for items. See, and I was going the other way. I was going to go Fate Weaver, um, uh, Lord of Change, uh, Impossible Robes, Magnus, and three Exalted Sorcerers on disc. And just summon in whatever just... you want past that. What's that, sorry? Just summon in what you want past that. Yeah. Because you're harnessing on threes and you don't give a crap. I like it. That works. I was thinking, like, if you take the Demon Princes, Mm -hmm. you get a lot more telepathy, which is hit or miss, but it's a good counter to Eldar, and it doesn't use, from an ETC format, doesn't use the Demon Book. But if you you can basically scream four times, terrify once or twice, and you got Magnus doing his D-shots, you can take out some of those um, small spammy armies. Uh, really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And there's yeah. some really good utility in the scene floor as well that keeps this just pumping things out. So yeah, you f- could roll on the leash. Imagine t- if you got treason five times and you played like Tau. Well, yeah, so you, you get like- that. You get uh, glean magic or whatever it's called um, to to get the like- extra dice when you cast stuff. And you got Magnus casting on twos. Get everything with uh, just ridiculous stats. <laughs> well, that's yeah, the thing, right? Really yeah. If, if Magnus casts the glean magic. Then every time a power goes off within range of him, and sorry, all the demon princes also have the um, the familiar, so they get to reroll psychic tests. Yep. So yep. you could theoretically scream four times on a single die, so it's a three plus with a reroll, really good odds to go off. Yep. And then those four dice go to Magnus, and he can use them. And then you could terrify. Let's so say you have two of them to terrify. You can terrify twice. So now Magnus has six dice, so you can almost double your dice. Not quite, but yep. almost. And that's on top of the nineteen mastery levels you have there, or eighteen. So I actually yeah, like it. I like the good. four princes and Magnus list. I don't know. It's retarded. Yeah, I, but I need to buy one. If I had Magnus <laughs> in my hands and he was built and painted, I'd take him to PMP with four princes. Nice. Just to test him out. Just beat up someone who has it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this brings us. Let's talk about the detachment. Okay. Oh, by the way, a little aside for the detachment people, a little piece of uh, information. Games Workshop came out with a name for the Decurian style things. Huh? They did. They, they just kind of slid under. It was under the Warhammer uh, community site. Uh, they're called detachments of formations. Detachments oh. of formations. Well, yeah. I will continue that to makes call them perfect formations. sense. Yeah, we, we have you know a combined arm detachment. Now we have detachment of fortress. So we have cats and dogs. So we have cats and dogs. We're good to go. Uh, dogs. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. I love it. <laughs> All right, so, so let's talk about the Sons of Magnus. The Thousand Sons Grand Coven, which is their detachment of formations so basically you have to take one core one auxiliary choice we went through all, most of the ones we talked about are either auxiliary or our command yep. um, but the core ones were the basically there's the two there's the um, war cabal and the second conclave which I can't even say 
Um, and so if you decide to take this formation, you get two command benefits. One of them is you get to re-roll Warlord traits on the Thousand Sun Warlord table. And so the fir- the Warlord table is pretty cool. First one's Admantium Will, and you can re-roll a single Deny the Witch each time. Uh, number two is Eternal Warrior. Uh, Eternal Warrior. Number three is they're not slowed by your Warlord and his unit aren't slowed by difficult terrain. Number four is you know an additional psychic power. Number five is your unit gets Deep Strike. If it already has Deep Strike, it does not scatter. And then Lord of Flux is the one with all enemy units within 12 inches. Treat all terrain, even open ground is difficult ground. Uh-huh. And uh, enemy units running, turbo boosting, or flat out within 12 inches have to take dangerous terrain tests. Not bad. Next one is the Master of Arcane Knowledge, which is basically if a Psyker from your detachment suffers a peril to warp, you can choose to reroll the result. In addition, Psykers from this detachment can attempt to manifest one additional Psychic power, then their Psychic level um, for each phase. So if you're level 3, you can cast 4 powers. So Magnus can actually cast 6 powers. Um, if you have... Uh, Magnus' Warlord trait is assigned. Um, yes. So he has the, the Flux one. Yeah. Solid. So that's pretty good. Like you can take a lot of level ones. They can cast two powers. Blah blah blah. It's pretty yeah, solid. Yeah. yeah. Any like comments on this detachment, the Grand Coven? Um, the the rerolling warlord traits thing is I don't know a little meh. It's you see that pretty often. I I don't I don't know how I feel about the Masters of Arcane Knowledge. Like it's not it's not bad by any stretch, but I don't know if I'd want to base a whole detachment around this. No, like I, 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 I don't think that on its own is compelling enough for me to take this over just like a combined arms attachment or something. Casting four powers with Demon Princes and six powers with Magnus would be a pretty, pretty big deal, I think. Not like I said, I don't know it would be, but, but you, it's but almost impossible to fit. Them. Yeah, yeah you, you can't, can't take fit that it. list. Can't? Well, the because yeah, you, you need the core thing, right? Yeah, right. you need the core, and so like the cheapest core, um, I guess you, you would be like a sorcerer. Naked, one unit, one other. So it'd be two sorcerers, one Rubik Marine, and one Terminator. Yeah. So like that's the and issue. And they have right? to take Mark of Zinch. So you're you're looking at 150, 400, 630 points before you could even take the uh, the War Sect. Right. I know because I tried to make a list like that, and it's like so yeah, you add Magnus, you've got 500 points for your Demon Princes. Like it, it's nice to if you want to play Thousand Suns, it's it's nice to have. But if you want to play, I think this is going to be mostly just like people are going to uh, scavenge formations out of it. You're going to yep. take like certain formations, run that in an existing army and things like that. I don't think it's necessarily going to be its its own thing. Um, so let's get into what the Thousand Suns get. So what it means. We kind of alluded. We kind of hinted to this. We should have probably done it before. But what are the Thousand Suns special rules, Dan? The Thousand Sun special rules. So it should be said that these guys are. Um, if you just declare that you're, so I could take a CAD and declare that I'm Thousand Suns, right? Yes. yes. So sim- so right. similar to chapter tactics. Again. Yep. Right. So the primary thing is again they have a lot of requirements where everything has to take Marcus Inch. You said it like six times, uh, but everything has to take Marcus Inch. Uh, you can only take actual characters from the. Like with the Mark of Zinch itself, so either Armin or Magnus, yeah, I guess, yep. the only two. Yep. Um, but what you gain instead is you get a whole bunch of benefits based on Veterans of Long War, which you get for free. Um, but the big one is if you cast a Blessing um, at all, your automatically your involve save from Mark of uh, Zinch is buffed by one. Yep. yep. Which is quite good. Um, and I don't remember the other one. You get Hatred Space Wolves. That's what it is. <laughs> Hate your space wolves, and they hate you too, right? Yes. Yeah, which sucks because you don't like. You're like, oh man, they're they're already killing you in combat. Yeah, yeah, but you know, what? it's pretty cool. One of the cool things too is with Magnus is that because he gets so if you cast a blessing on him, he gets plus one invul. But then mm-hmm. like that stacks really well with demon allies because they can do cursed earth, which is a blessing. So now he's like a two plus re rolling ones, yep. which is pretty sweet. Um, now, did you guys read through the artifacts? Is there anything in there that you guys like? Like I know there's like. A few from other books. Yeah, there was yeah, the a... big one is the uh, Astral Grimoire. Yep. Um, okay, so what does that do? Everyone's kind of talking about that right now. At the start of the movement phase, you pick either the bearer or a single friendly unit uh, within 12 inches of the bearer. Uh, during the movement phase, that unit has the jump unit type. It's pretty cool. So you're jumping people forward. You know, you can that means you can jump over enemies too, which is pretty cool. Uh, or you can just, you know, super speed a uh, unit that normally is slow, like, say, Terminators or 
anything really, right? Which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. The one that I like is the Athenian scrolls. What are these guys? So that's like, you? they're Greek, basically. If the bearer makes a successful psychic test that includes two or more dice of the same number, the power is being manifested with unstoppable force, and you cannot deny it. <laughs> You're going to fish for that uh, unstoppable force. I like it. I, get, some, get those miscasts. Sometimes there's that one power that you need. You throw six dice at it. You get yep. two twos and the two fours. It goes off, and then the guy can't stop it, right? That's actually really interesting. So you could cast a power on snake eyes, and it would go off. Oh, successful psychic test. Okay, so not yeah, good. Yeah, go, yeah, right. So it has to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. You still have to make the test, but if you have two twos in there, and then the rest are all four plus, yeah, it's going off, and the guy can't stop it. So you could, you could kind of. Sometimes you can like you know throw out a few small powers, or if you have a few big powers, and if the guy holds on to his dice till the end, you could then like ninja this out, and then he, he like wastes all his dice if he's a. A numpty, but yeah, or this could get through Death Star blockage because usually they have psychers with, uh, you know, adamantium will, so they're denying on threes or fours. Yep. Uh, so this could actually get a power through on them. This yeah, could it could be a big deal. Yeah. Especially like you know you have divination, you're like okay, I want to run that unit, and then you're gonna scream yeah. or fly like a million screamers over it, and it's like yep. pretty solid. This will work so really well that... against Cabal because Cabal is a great example that denies on twos against yeah. everything, right? Very cool. Yeah. How does the Cabal get to nine twos? Am I ridiculous? Are those threes? Uh, it depends what's casting against it, but they're they're level three sorcerers and they get color of corn, so they're yes, denying okay. on fours against almost everything and then plus two on top of that. Yeah, if you take the color, right? Uh, well, the dogs always have it. Oh, because they're in the dog. I'm like sitting there. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, you're in a dog unit. Yep. Yeah, that makes I sense. don't think sorcerers can take colors of corn. That's what I was amazing. like. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> also, sense. horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for the Thousand Suns uh, part of this book. What's your guys' final? Um, go to you first, Dan. What's your final thought of the Thousand Suns? Um, they are interesting. The star is definitely Magnus. Um, he is the guy that people will look at when you say Thousand Suns. They're gonna assume you have Magnus. Yeah. Um, but they do have like the uh, one thing that we didn't really cover was that the models are. Freaking amazing! The models are beautiful. Like the every one Marines, the Terminators, the Sorcerers, every single model, like absolute knockout, incredible models. Yep. Um, so you're gonna love, you know, painting and building all that stuff. Um, as far as like where they're gonna be in a competitive sense, if you're just running Thousand Suns, you're probably gonna be a little disappointed with how few models you get. Um, that was the big thing. That's that's the only major thing that I saw is like it's going to be a small, very elite army with not as much durability as they might need. They're kind of like I guess they're kind of like Grey Knights, yep. but they trade defense for a little bit more offense with the AP three guns. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's that's probably where I would be at. So I'm going to say a little bit ahead of Grey Knights if we had to stack them. Yeah, with with Magnus in the mix, I'd agree. Yeah. Magnus would probably jump it up a little bit further, uh, honestly, but. Uh, I mean, like that's the cool thing with Thousand Suns. They do have a lot of possibilities, but if you're if you're running Rubric Marines and Terminators, you're probably looking at around there. Yeah, yeah. I, th yeah, I think it's like a good ally. It's a good support detachment. Super elite. Yeah, yeah. This so is the one thing that great oh. for everyone who's wanted to run it though. I know we have one guy in Ottawa who loves running Thousand Suns, and so now he's got a new thing to play with, which is which is cool just in its own right. But yeah, Mag Magnus the, is the star of the show. Absolutely. And the cool thing too is a lot of people like elite armies because it's just like cheap right three boxes dudes 200 bucks you have a whole army yep mm -hmm. like magnus three into terminators two demon princes you got an army now right so that's true yeah. that's a good point well even definitely... caleb like we're talking on the chat and i'm just like uh four princes and magnus and he's like oh i can proxy my shop to you as uh demon princes and then i'll buy a magnus <laughs> and then bang he's got a whole army right Fucking fully guy. painted <laughs> what what haven't those who shopped you been is, is there like any model those haven't been now you shop me that's the only thing they've never been used as. <laughs> so that's an inside joke for those of you listening, is that uh, we have a friend who's obsessed with Tomb Kings, and he proxies his Tomb Kings as everything. He converts <laughs> them, but it's still kind of... Oh, man. That's good. Uh, so we're going to move on. They basically created a Demon of Zinch army, so you get different benefits to go within that. Um, so they've basically replaced the pink horror entry for all armies so pink yep. horrors have a new rules then they added blue horrors and brimstone horrors which we're going to talk about in a second <laughs> then they added in a whole bunch of formations and custom things that we're going to uh, get into so we'll start off with 
the pink horrors and what they changed. So pink horrors, standard, they're still 90 points, the same thing. They took away access to demonology. So they said, GW said, you know what, we don't want you guys summoning and then summoning and then summoning. We want to keep it kind of, you can have access to your zinch, which is still pretty, it's a good lore really now that it's, now. you know, yeah. six powers. Um, you know, if you roll a six, you have a D missile coming from the backfield. Their Brotherhood of Sorcerers, same as before, Demon of Zinch. Um, the one thing that, that changed is that um, they added the rule split. And so this has been super, super, super controversial online. Everybody's kind of like pissed off. But basically, for every pink horror you kill, you get two blue horrors within six inches that form the, a new unit. Now, if there's already a unit of blue horrors within six inches, they add to that unit. Um, so basically 10 pink horrors or 11 as a lot of people run them so you get the extra magic level they can become 22 blue horrors yep. um, other than that they've stayed identical so who wants to take blue horrors so blue horrors weapon skill add voice skill 3 strength toughness 2 so you'll see a trend here uh, 1 wound initiative 3 leadership 7 1 attack uh, these guys are still master level 1 they are brotherhood of sorcerers so when these guys split uh, you're, you're keeping your mastery level. In fact, you're adding to the mastery levels overall. Uh, but what's crazy with these guys, you can take them on their own. It's a 50-point unit for 10 of them. Uh, so if you want your warp charge battery, you've got that or another option we'll talk about. Uh, but these guys also, like the pinks, if you take 11 to 20 of them, they give you two warp charges instead of one. Um, but they don't get an additional magic level. Correct. They just generate more warp, warp charge. Uh, like the pink horrors, they can only roll on change. Uh, you can have a unit of up to 20 for 5 points of model extra. And these guys have the rules split again, where when you kill them, just like the pinks turning into blues, blues will turn into brimstone horrors. Dan, you want to cover those? Yeah, so brimstone horrors are exact same, similar, very similar stat line, except they all drop to strength and tough one. <laughs> uh, which is they got two wounds unit, which is pretty cool. Two wounds. Oh yeah, so sorry, a blue a blue horror technically splits into two brimstones, but the brimstones share a base. Uh, so both brimstones occupy the same model, so it's still one model, but it's a two wound model. Yep. Uh, they are, yeah, the exact same. They're still psychers, right? Yeah, they're still psychers. Yes, are still psychers. Yeah, Brotherhood right? sorcerers. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's what they do. They are that. Um, they they do not split after that. The brimstone is the smallest they can get. Um, yeah. But otherwise, they're just like a pink horror in a lot of ways. They're still demons of zinch. Um, they still, you know, yeah, generate warp charge. Um, and they split the same way. So if there's already a unit there, they join that unit. If not, they jump into, they form their own unit again. Um, but yeah, so tough one, two wounds. So literally everything but weapons that only cause wounds will instant kill it. Bolters. Yeah. The yeah. two wounds are barely nominal. The two wounds is very like when people oh, yeah, look it's at pointless. It, oh, it's a twenty you like a twenty wound model. It doesn't matter. They're so all the, dead. They're, yeah. wound model. they're instant death to almost everything in the game. Yeah. The the, yeah. the one place where that comes in handy though is is and th this is something that's come up a fair bit is you can take these guys as their own unit right it's thir 30 points for 10 pairs of brimstone horror so t uh was that we're going to 20 wounds right 20 wounds of these guys take a whole bunch of these and deep strike them next to something it's going to take a long time to burn through that many wounds of demonic instability uh with it, it, if you're considering instability sure but again they will do zero damage back oh they will right? do nothing they'll do nothing back unless you take the formation for them agree so these guys these guys to me their biggest thing. This is it. It used to be you'd want to take a cat. So you're like, okay, I need Bellacore. Or I need, uh, I don't know, Screamer Star or something. You would take two Nurgling units. Yep. Or sometimes a horror unit. Nurgling. Now you take two Brimstone horror units. You get plus two warp charge, 60 points, minimum tax. Right? Yep, that, to, to me, that's the best thing that they're they're good for. Yep. Like, like, as you said, yeah, you're going to take 20 of them. But, like, that unit's going to disappear fast. If you get shot, oh yeah. oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's still a cheap speed bump, though, right? You're spending six, sixty points for something that's covering a huge board presence, and that, that has to be dealt with because it's going to tie up. Like I think thinking about my army, right? You drop in twenty of these guys right in front of my unit of riptides. I have to kill them because they charge me. My army's doing nothing. Maybe yeah. Well, like it's true, but yeah. the the other thing too that I like about these is um, as the minimum core tax. They allow me to basically counteract the Gene Stealer cults because yes. it's 10 of them for 30 points. Whereas yep. the Nurglings were three bases. This is like I have 20 guys in lines yep. in front of my monstrous creatures. So if you get first turn and you roll that six, you're not charging my monstrous creatures. You're killing my Brimstone Horse. Yeah, absolutely. They are and it's a lot screen. of backfield, like Obsec, 
20 units of these cover have a footprint over an objective so i can stop the other guy from coming in i can corrupt an objective with my screamers fly away and just leave my brimstone horrors on there yep. and the I models the models are super tiny they're like what half an inch tall something like that like you, uh, you, if fair. you take a look at the pictures they're they're about they're they're about the size of a 25 mil base turned on the side so about an inch tall i guess but like super tiny really really yeah. easy to hide yeah, so I think they're are they're arguably the best troop game in the demon the troop unit in the demon book now. <laughs> troop game in the demon book. Yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. I'm yes. glad they added in. Now the the only place to get them currently is for them in a box of Silver Tower. Prepare your wallets. No, I'm sure I'm sure there's going to be a box coming out. Uh, I mean, th this is so I, I I this is speculation. But if it comes true, I think it's really cool. So GW's mantra for the past couple of years has been release awesome looking models and then maybe put out rules like a month later, uh, which has resulted in a lot of people being very upset. The Mutalith Vortex Beast was a fantastic example of this in fantasy. A lot of people bought it and then a lot of people sold it on eBay for $20 the week after. Um, in this case, we're going to see sort of a return to what they did a long time ago, which is rules first and then models to follow. Um, that said, they are being a little tight-lipped about this, as far as I've seen, which is kind of discouraging. Uh, but I, I am hoping we're going to see uh, a box that comes out. You know, you buy pink horrors, you get ten of those, you get, you know, five blues and two brimstones or something. Or if you can even buy these on their own, buy like a box of ten blues and and ten brimstones or something. Well, it'll, I think it'll have to be boxes of twenty blues and boxes of uh, twenty brimstones. Isn't it all the same screw though? For what, Current, Silver Tower? Currently, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking they're just going to reprint that sprue. No, no, no it's... That sprue. The, the Silver Tower sprue is like... Two has Skaven and stuff on it, right? Oh, is it all one? Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. No, they're... Well, with with the way that they design this stuff now, it's it's a simple matter of just getting the molds made because they can just cat, they can just copy that and cat it like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. True. It's not a big deal, but it's... Uh, like, if you think about it, so let's say you're the type of guy that's like, okay, I want to have absolute maximum number. And so I should say, sorry, sorry, Blue Canary in the chat, yeah, if you move the unit of Blue Horrors away from them when they split, you can create a new unit and continue and so forth. But, um, like, if you're going to show up with 20, like, let's say you're like, oh, I have two troop choices, two units of 10 pink horrors, you then need to have 40 Blue Horrors in your case and 40 Brimstone Horrors in your case, right? Yeah. So yeah. what about those people that want to run like the 90 horror list? You now need 180 blues in your case and then 180 brimstones in your case. Or more. Yeah. That's or more. That's going to be rough. Of your creation. So. Yeah. I mean, now, the odds it, of you losing that, those cra like 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 how often do you lose all your horrors in a game, right? If you take let's say you take 4 units of 10 and they're sitting in train, you're playing KG, you're not you're going to lose one or two, three, four models max, right? You're going to hide them. Now I was I was thinking about this for a while, and I told the guys that I would uh, say it on here. That the in theory, there's you know we all play the ITC. We all know what the ITC is, right? Um, they're talking about you know some kind of scaling back of the of the craziness. Now I have played with this unit, and I wasn't. I, it, it's you know the the sky isn't falling. It's not as crazy as it seems. It really, really isn't. I have played with it, and it it was cool, but it wasn't like. It wasn't game changing. It wasn't gonna yeah. change the whole I'm, world. I'm inclined the... inclined to agree. So let, let's actually clarify how how this works. So the dude split. The only way you can prevent splitting. So there's a few few lines of conversation for this. The only way you can prevent splitting is if the entire unit dies due to demonic instability. <laughs> Not even uh, demonic instability, but like demonic instability of a two or a twelve. Uh, no. So the is the it? the exact wording is. Uh, any, anything that would cause the entire unit to be removed with the exception of demonic instability. So, for example, if you have four guys left and you roll, like, let's say you roll a 10 on a leadership test of a 2, your entire unit goes away. My, my interpretation of it, but I think the, the word, wording supports it. But anyway, the, the things that have been suggested are like, okay, you know, instant death should prevent splitting. Um, killing the entire unit in one phase should prevent splitting. But, but to Dan's point, you know, I don't think this is really all that crazy. Um, my concern, and I think probably the most legitimate concern about this, is how long it takes to do this. Because um, if you are running that list with a bunch of horrors, and you are putting them in positions where you want them to die for whatever reason, uh, you're basically having the same problem Gene Silver Cult has right now, which is you are pulling off a ton of models every turn and putting on a ton of models every turn. Uh, which, yeah. 
you know, for a game that already has some tight timelines, is going to be a little a little tough, especially with less less hustle from some players. Well, as Yoshi said, you take um, nine units of horrors, and you take three of the Necron pylons, and then you just shoot one of the pylons through all the horror units, so you kill like one from each, or whatever D three from each, whatever it is, and then you would. Um, and then you create the blue horrors behind them, and then the other pylon would go through like both units if you intermingle them correctly, and then they split <laughs> again, and then you get your third pylon, you go through again, and in your turn one, you basically have like um, like twenty seven units, if not more. So that's, that's pretty cool. But insane. I also think it's it, it is it's like crazy. It's not, but it's not that bad. And one thing you have to keep in mind: if your opponent has like twenty blue horrors, let's say, you go okay, you shoot and you kill one of his pink horror units, he drops all twenty blue horrors. And then a kill point mission, you just shoot his other unit. He can't place the unit. You get a kill point. See, so there's no model. So depending on how they rule that, which I'm assuming they're going to rule it where you get a kill point. So then you have a horror unit. I just shoot one horror every. With yeah. a different, so, I, so this unit shoots it, kills one horror. Okay, that horror pops out. Uh, blue horrors, I get the kill point. And you just keep doing it. You're going to rack up 4,000 kill points. And like, Oh, yeah. It, it burns and kill points hard. Like you, 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 it's, it's terrible for kill points um, as far as that goes for sure. The one, yep. the one that I was considering that would be reasonable, and I think that would kind of like this would, be the, this would be the thing I would vote for if I was on the ITC vote. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't vote for it, but if, the, if it had to be nerfed, this is the one I would pick. Um, would be if you spawn a unit, it has to go with the blue horror unit if there's already a unit. You can't make new units. Simple as that. If you split, it has to join the blue horrors. If you can't place the models, they're dead. I, I, don't, I don't follow. Isn't that basically oh, what the rule is? The issue was was like being able to split multiple units out of the same pink horror unit, right? Oh, right. So if like one guy dies over here, you put the horror on the other side six inches away. Then Something like that. Yeah. You know, or oh, in any given phase. I yeah. think it should happen at like the end of phase. Yeah, what I'm saying is like instead of being able to sp split into multiple units, it can only split into one other unit. Yeah. So exactly. maximum of three units. So like if this is my unit of pink horrors, my phone is my pink horrors, and let's say, you know, I go over tangle wire and one dies in the first phase, right? I'm going to put a unit here. And then in the shooting phase, another one dies. I'm going to put a unit here, which is more than six inches away from that one, right? Yeah. Um, so you can so get... Join if can. Yeah, yeah. If you force it to join, it, it takes care of a lot of the shenanigans. But like, is, is that much warp charge for kill point ratio... Really a big deal? I don't know. It just would be an easy nerf that I think would quiet a lot of the uh, it would hysteria. You know? not that I'm, not, I'm not sold that this is OP. I'm like, it's great. Horrors are good now. It's solid. But I'm not I'm not sold on any of that, yeah, that internet stuff. Not, yeah, it's not crazy. Yeah. It's about warp charge generation, but if you're taking 90 horrors... What the hell's casting the powers? Like, yeah. you're cutting back on all your other stuff. And like, Magnus can only cast six powers, bro. Like, and he, <laughs> can't, summon. And he can't summon. And then oh. you got like Kairos can summon, but like, like if you're if you have all these extra dice, you only cast so many powers. Eventually, you're gonna be like just mishapping yourself off the board, not mishapping. Uh, Paraling. Paraling. Why am I doing it? So we'll move on to next. The first formation is a core formation for the new uh, Demon Decurion. It's a lore stealer host. Um, it's basically the blue scribes and three to nine units of blue horrors. Um, what they get is um, you get to reroll fail to hit into wound rolls of a one when attempt when attacking psychers. Um, and then if you take a maximum formation, um, if a unit from this lore master's host within nine inch, sorry, if a unit with is within nine inches of an enemy psyker or enemy unit with the Brotherhood of Psyker special rules. Um, they can add one to the strength of all their psychic powers. So it, it's pretty good. Um, the one thing that I like about this is it's 180 points for the blue scribes. It's 150 points for three units of blue horrors. And that's 300 points for a demon core decurion detachment is pretty good. But it is kind of crappy because the blue scribes, to me, aren't, aren't really worth their points. Mm-hmm. And speaking of bad formations, the next one is the Brimstone Conflagration. Who wants that one?
I mean, to be fair, like brimstones uh, are almost useless in combat. Like beyond useless because they're just gonna you know, die worse than anything else. Like I got charged by two drones and my brimstone unit exploded. Um, so this would do something. There is a it could it would do something. It would kill the drones. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Everything demons ever needed. So we, so we got to go back because you guys missed it. Blue scribes only eighty one points. I said one hundred and eighty. My bad. He's, he's very cheap, and he gets a random cast that he can take from other people. Um, he's it's not terrible. Blue scribes is not terrible. He's he might not be the best choice, but he's not terrible. He's cheap. Mm-hmm. He comes with the disc too. That's true. I don't know. I've just never felt the need to, to play him. He's a little more, you know. Oh, it's a wicked model. Yeah, for well, sure. It's two blues, too, so it's like, it's hilarious. They just, like, clearly just commandeered this disc, grabbed some fucking paper, and just start buzzing around. It's like, no, you! No, you go! No, you go! It's hilarious, though. So. Like it is it. a really well done fig. Yeah. Okay, so then we'll give Dan the next one. The good one. The Omniscient Oracles. Oh, this one. This one's cool. Omniscience? Oracles. <laughs> <laughs> so this one uh, is actually quite cool. You'll probably actually see this one. Um, it is Kairos Weaver, so it must have a special character, Kairos Weaver, uh, and then one to three Lords of Change. So good, they made it one man. Yeah, it's very nice. That it's only one that you have the option to run four if you want, but it's nice that you can just run Kairos and another Lord of Change. Um, the restrictions are none, so that's always a good thing. What you gain from this formation is that they are allowed to reroll any rolls of one when making psychic checks which is great. Um, also, you get to reroll to hit and to wound of ones, which is even better, especially considering like the D shots and stuff. Always a good thing. Um, and in addition, when you have this this unit, they get to reroll. You get to reroll any failed attempts to seize and any reserve rolls. Oh, it's any reserve rolls. Ah! Yeah, you get to go. So we had a discussion earlier uh, that it might only be uh, only failed reserve rolls, but you're actually able to uh, reroll any reserve rolls, so you Sweet. are able to uh, very heavily manipulate the the possibilities of reserves coming in or out. Because there's so yeah. many demon lists where the guys take a CAD just to get a fortification to reroll reserves. Yeah, that's that's solid. That's uh, Arrows is a great caster. Uh, he's a great... So is Lord of Change, especially when you can give him impossible robes to become almost indestructible, or you can give him you know, any of the relics. Are, all the uh, Curse of the Wolf and relics are fantastic. Um, but especially like Paradox or anything like that. Really good stuff for sure. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's a solid solid formation for sure. You'll probably see this. What would you run on your Lord? Of, what lores do you think you'd more likely roll for Lord of Change with? Uh, you know, there's always a standard answer of whatever you're playing against and whatever is the rest of your list. But He's only got two, right? He's got Div and uh, Demonology. Is that it? You can't do Zinch. Oh, and Zinch. Sorry. I would consider Zinch sometimes. Zinch is actually pretty good. Uh, but if you already have Fate Weaver and Magnus, then probably not. Um, probably Demonology, I would imagine. Cause yeah, because that's what I was thinking. He gets Cursed Earth, him yeah. and Kairos are now champions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, this is my this is my secret sauce list that everyone's waiting for. If we get 20 viewers, I'll tell you about it. Um, but that is very possible. There is a good chance you will be seeing... An actual thing. People are saying, like, there's an, I think there was an over under on how many Magnus you're going to see at LVO this year. Um, and everyone said there's going to be a whole bunch, but not in the top eight. I could easily see Magnus in top eight. I could, I guess, no problem. So, um, I'm thinking about putting him in my list, man. And I'm thinking about taking this Omniscient or this. So, this Omniscient Omniscient Oracle is in my list, but I'm like, I may put Magnus in, may not. I'm right. Uh, it doesn't work with my list. I can kind of do it. Yeah, but it's cool we'll though. It's down. awesome. This is the list I want to test next, more than likely. Something involving this. Uh, like I could, I could see, and I could see Magnus and four Demon Princes doing well even at LVO. See, I just don't like Demon Princes anymore. Four wounds is terrifying. I cannot handle that. I watched you roll four ones on Bellacore. And he just died. And it's like, oh, you have four wounds. You're dead. You have yeah. wounds as a chapter master. Like, get him off my table. If he I has five wounds, maybe, you know? But I just can't I just can't do that. But Lord of Change are actually super durable. 
top six is a big deal to buy. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's impressive. And he comes with an innate three up rerolling ones. And so the wicked part about him is he's like the null deploy king. Because sometimes you can only fit one monstrous creature in the corner to not get shot. Yep. And you have to split the other guy, right? So you put the Lord of Change up. He's he's not necessarily going to die with the three plus rerolling ones. Toughness yep. six. Yep, you're totally right. So I, I like it. I think uh, I think it could totally work. The only so, thing yeah. that it is is yeah. you need the whole formation on the board to get the rerolls, but condition while all smalls on this. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize that actually. That's the only condition because because at first I was like, wow, that means Kairos can actually go in reserve sometimes. Yeah. You put the Lord of Change on, you can truly null deploy, um, but no, you need them both on. But he that's should be cool. on anyway. That's some that's some good counterplay knowledge. If you play against this, make sure if they don't have both, don't let them reroll C's or reroll reserves. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. That's going to be a counterplay move for you. Anti demon people, you bad people. Yeah. And the awesome part is you play against the Lord of War with this army, five plus with a reroll, better than 50 50 odds to seize. Yeah, that's true. That's solid. That's solid. So the not next formation, I, oh, sorry. Uh, just not that I would do it, but that's it. What, that you would never seize? I don't want to seize on a chance of like a that. So. It's scary. I agree. I, I, I don't seize. Whenever I, if I give somebody first turn, generally. I'd put, I put. I would just put them in a corner, reserve my whole army, and be like, "Well, the first two games of this game are going to be nothing." That should be. So I do the Logan every time. Yeah. That should definitely be an advanced. What was that? Advanced tactics by advanced people. The it is. It actually is. Should you is see? That one? Yeah. But it's it's because I'm being a smart ass. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, you should is, never yeah. roll to seize. Yep. End of video. <laughs> well, yeah. I explained a little bit. I was like, you just never want to do it because if you don't get first turn. You should always set up to go second, and then your optimal thing to do is to go second. Yeah. yeah, there's a fame, probably one of the most famous Dan quotes is definitely bad player sees. I tell that to uh, all my whole team, my whole load dice team. I tell them all the time, bad player sees. That's it. Um, Tau would be the exception. I will say Tau is the exception. I roll the sees to my Tau army, but well, because the thing about Tau is they're so survivable, you don't care, right? Well, and they're not moving anywhere. They're just gonna shoot you. The next So, yeah. so sometimes in a pure kill points mission, I will seize, but that's very rare. Yeah. If it's pure kill points and the guy made a mistake, you can probably do it. So the next formation is the Herald of Anarchic. <laughs> Anarchic? Anarchic? The Anarchic Heralds. Um, this, this formation immediately, I don't know, spoke to me. I love it. It's three to nine Heralds of Zinch. So I can't tell you how many times you put in a CAD to get access to Zinch Heralds for your, you know, for your star. Like, lots of people do it, man. They want three, four Heralds. They want access to all their, their powers. They want to guarantee that they get Cursed Earth. The only way to guarantee Cursed Earth is to take, like, three or four Heralds, level threes, and roll for it like crazy. Um, this formation means you no longer need tax. You can just be like, okay, I have this Death Star. I need two or three Heralds. Well, three, obviously, you need. Um, and the wicked part is, is that um, you get an extra warp charge in your pool, for each model from this formation that's on the battlefield. So now you have a 45 point Herald that's giving you two warp charge. So normally a warp charge costs 25 points. So this is actually like a Herald with, you know, um, basically two powers that cost less than two warp charge and he's generating two. If you take nine of these dudes, that is, um, uh, what's 45 times nine, Logan? 45 uh, but times anyway, nine is 405. That's 405 points that gives you 18 warp charge, which is pretty good. It's not 405. There's no way it is. You just do that in your yeah, head. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is. But anyway, so that's that's pretty solid. Um, the way that I would like to run this is you take three heralds, you make them level three, and then it's basically 
um, 12 warp charge for three heralds. And then that goes into your star or something like that. You can really buff it. You can also do like a giant horror unit. You put like a whole bunch of these guys in it, and then you can just summon factory like crazy out of it. Yeah. Um, you do need to split them because you can't summon the same unit twice, but this gives you at least your guaranteed to be able to be like, hey, a screamer unit, a demonet unit, um, whatever, and, and figure it out. So it's pretty good. Do you guys like this one? Or? Oh, yeah. A lot absolutely. of people hate on it, but I think it's fantastic. I mean, what, when do you not want three heralds? <laughs> and then when is free warp charge not good? Like, I think if you're if you're going to have a list that's going to include three heralds, and you're not making... Like, there really aren't any huge sacrifices you could be making to take this, unless you're running the full-on incursion, like like your list. Like, I think this is a great, a great formation. Yeah. And I, I did make a list where it like, lets me cut back on kill on kill points. So I drop the Burning Sky Host and I just load up on Heralds in my Death Star. And then I can split it into like smaller units of with like Heralds and things if I'm, I'm going against something that I need to. But it is what it is. So next thing we got going on is we got the Demon, the new Demon of Zinch, Decurion style or Detachment of Formations. So what does this get you? So actually, do we want to talk about the demonic loci first? We can go to that first if you want these, to. I'll these have, go back to that. These have some cool stuff. So the one, the one that really jumps out here is the exalted locus of creation. It's thirty-five points. Every time a pink horror in this model's unit is slain, it splits into four blue horrors, <laughs> and splits into two brimstone horrors after that. So you can, and if you take the. Um, the incursion, right? The the locust bubbles are twelve inches, I think. Yeah. So and then you have like four units of horrors. You put the one herald in the one unit, and then when all your heralds die, you end up getting like um, a ridiculous amount of yeah, blue horrors. Yeah, it's it's rather insane. But but then again, you're just creating blue horrors that are then just going to die. It's up. It, yes. It's if, cool if and it's not. If you're not playing in something that has a lot of kill points, this is this is nuts. <laughs> But the rest, they have the other three, they have a few other ones. A lot of them didn't really speak to me, to be honest, besides that creation one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the but. creation one is a standout for sure. The other ones were just kind of just random. I didn't really see anything that was amazing either. Yeah, the, the Locus you know, of Conjuration is still there if you want that, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that brings us to the Demonic Decurion. It's the same as the standard one. You get one core, you have to have one auxiliary, and then you get up to three command formations. We already went through um, all the formations. There's a few little ones, like you can take three soul grinders and things like that. Um, but basically, what you get for this is you get the uh, Imperial Form, ephemeral. which is basically you... <laughs> what is it? Ephemeral. Oh, ephemeral, like an ephemeral <laughs> artery. Oh my god, I've never <laughs> seen that before. <laughs> oh, Chris. What are we going to do with you? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Stop breaking. It's fine. So they add one to the invulnerable saving throw, but you lose the reroll one. So. Yeah, and the 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 and, plus one caps out at the three plus. Yeah, which which to me means it always caps out at three plus, right? That Regardless of what kind of would buffs be my take on it. Yes. So to if a, I yeah, because it says uh, plus one of their invulnerable save to a maximum invulnerable save of three plus. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think that'll right there is enough that you'd probably never take this detachment. In, yeah, unless I don't I'm like it. Definitely reading that wrong. Because with the grimoire, sorry, go ahead, Dan. I'll let you do. It. Oh, I, I was just gonna say, I, I'll, I also agree that without the like the reroll ones, even even scrapping all the bonuses to invols, I would still rather have a five plus rerolling ones than a than a, a four plus invol because ninety percent of the time you're taking a cover save anyway. Yep. Yeah. And the reroll ones works on all saves. So and you know that, that's better. the thing, right? Yeah, the reroll one. If uh, you have stealth and you're jinking with your screamers, it's like a three plus rerolling one. Like, yeah, it's incredible. Like, there's so many times when you don't need it, and then like with cursed earth and things, you're gonna get to a four plus anyway. And when the rerolling one makes it better, and then if you take the Lord of Change in this formation and he has the robe, well, it's it's a three plus. It, he gets no benefit yeah. from it. Oh, the robe is and then you terrible also don't the get the ones. Yeah, and then you also don't get the the standard demonic um, warp storm table. You get a new one, which we can talk about, and there's no plus one invulnerable save on it, so you're never going to get that. And we've talked about this earlier with Kairos and with the de uh, incursion. You can get like a sixty percent chance at plus one invul. Like that comes up a lot, man. Yeah. So I think I think I think that alone almost kills this detachment for me. Yep. Well, yeah, I, the only it's... benefit is combat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean I, you probably don't want to be in combat anyway. 
Yeah, exactly. Like I was talking, uh, well, I was part of a conversation with Justin Curtis yesterday, de- big, like, well-known demon player in the U.S. He said, "Yes, let me take this and lose the one thing that makes my army really competitive." <laughs> it's like it's sure. it's just not now, worth doing. There are there are builds that will benefit from this. I think the horror spam build definitely benefits better from this than the reroll ones. You think just so? because, yeah, because. Um, when you're creating, when you're taking the locust and you're creating units of 40, 50, 60 blue horrors, they're not going to be in cover. So now they have a four up. Yeah, I suppose yeah. if your objective is to kill your own guys to really pump out those mastery levels, yeah. Some of the spammier lists, I think, benefit from that. But in every other way, the screamers are better with the reroll ones, all the monstrous creatures. Yep. Like, how easy is it to get Kairos to a fucking two plus rerolling ones? It's pretty easy, yeah. right? It's trivial. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least a three plus is easy. I said two plus is kind of challenging. Well, but you, three yeah, plus you is, grim him, right? You know, so. Yeah, I agree. Not, not really worth it. So it's a sham. So the only real thing that the demons get is new rules for pink horrors and that one new formation. <laughs> With Kairos and a Lord of Change, which that's is, my which take is damn that. good. Like, which is damn good. I'll take I'll, that. I'll, I'll take. I'll take one really good formation. Now let, let's talk about the Warp Storm table because this does have some cool stuff on it. So I hate it. So hate I don't. It? I want. I I think the current one is much better. All right. I think this one's cool. Dan, take take us for a, for a walk through the Warp Storm. Sure. So there Tsuchian. are twelve. Sorry. Yeah. There are twelve more results on this. Um, the one requirement to use this is it has to be a Zinch. Like, uh, sorry, a demon detachment that is entirely Zinch has to be your primary detachment. So there is a restriction there. Um, there is, I, I heard some talk of people saying that every round you could potentially choose a different table, but that seems not likely to go through as a thing. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so these are the results here. Uh, number two, so yeah, normally in the old table, two, three, four is bad. Five, four, uh, five, six, eight, nine are like random shooting attacks. And 10, 11, 12 are good things for you. Uh, the one cool thing about this table is they're all actually generally random, but not <laughs> negative automatically, yes. yeah. which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll get into that after. Anyway, the the main, the first one, uh, number two, if you roll two ones, uh, it, you take a randomly selected character, excluding any model with the demon special rule. So none of yours, which is pretty cool. Well, more than likely. Um, that model suffers D3 wounds with no saves. If you kill it, you get a Chaos spawn. That's pretty cool. Not bad. I like it. Not bad. Yeah. If you do like D3, if you do three wounds to like Eldrad with a three plus three rolling in ball or like Magnus, you know, yeah. not Magnus, I guess, well, you, but you know yeah. what I mean? Any of those characters could be pretty cool. Um, Azrael. That would be pretty yep. sweet. Actually. Yep. F that guy. Take him off the table. Right. Right? That'd be pretty sweet. Anyway, uh, so the next one, the three, any uh, any unit attempting to manifest a psychic power, including two or more dice, the same number, they pay, take a Peros result. So, probably bad if you have a Zinch army, but automatically <laughs> careful, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you will Peros. Now, one cool thing is it wouldn't affect uh, Magnus. Yep. That's cool. Wouldn't affect him. Wouldn't peril. affect that formation that ignores Peros either. Yep, yep. So that's, that's cool stuff. Um, so next one, mirror step. Uh, select one uh, random and or yeah, random uh, zinch unit. Yeah, uh, and remove from play. The unit then immediately deep strikes. So again, random, but could potentially hop you onto an objective. Get pink horror, like a big pink horror blob, onto an enemy objective, and then they can't take it off because the blues and the brims. Uh, next one, gale of change. All psychers on the board. Harness warp charges on threes, including your enemies, which is yeah. Kind of a toss up, but again, could yeah. be pretty good. Uh, good against the library's conclave, right? No, it care. says unless they would otherwise harness them on two plus. No, but I mean, like, because then you don't care, yeah. Yeah, then you just don't care if it happens or not. Oh, fair enough, yes. Um, Munigenic fire, number six. All flamers on the battlefield are defined as having warp flame. Uh, for anybody who doesn't play Zinch Demons, warp flame is a check at the end of the phase. If you take a wound, uh, you do a toughness check. If you fail, um, you take D3 wounds with no say, no armor or cover. Um, it's, if it's, you pass, though, you gain 6 plus fuel of bank. Yeah, it's fickle. Because Zinch is fickle. fickle. I love it, though. I use it all the time. It's one of my favorite rules. Is it, um, is it no saves? Okay. I thought it was like D6 strength 3 AP4 or something. No, you're Mediator. thinking Soul Blaze. That's I am Soul thinking Blaze. Soul Blaze. You're right. Yeah, yep, this is I no saves. Well, yeah. invulnerable. No, no other saves. Yeah, no armor. 
So it's actually it's actually pretty cool. It's but again, bad. all flamer weapons like it's not like flamers are exceptionally popular right now. They might come back, considering um, what we are looking at with Gene Steer cults. Mm-hmm. Um, or you'll be summoning flamer units too with uh, Magnus, right? Which is kind of cool. Uh, number seven. So the most common roll. Uh, each player gains D3 rerolls. Roll separately for each player. Each reroll allows the player to reroll any single die during the turn. At the end of the turn, uh, any unused rerolls are lost. So pretty cool. Actually, incredibly good considering it only lasts your own player turn. It'll stop at the end of your own player turn. So only your psychic phase or your rest of your turn. But there is a chance that they could pull some cool reroll or something. But it's actually quite good. That's actually quite That's awesome. Really good, An extra yeah. fake leap, basically. Um, number eight. This is my favorite one, actually. Um, all warp charges for psychic powers are dropped by one. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so, oh, sorry, the warp charge requirement to cast any psychic powers dropped by one. Very cool. Uh, amazing with Magnus. Yes. Then you're just like, oh man, it's crazy. Because just one dying everything. Uh, Storm of Fire, <sighs> a little faster. Roll a d6 for every non vehicle unit on the battlefield. A one or a two, they take d6, strength four, AP4 hits with warp flame. Um, so, more likely than the old way. Yep. Because uh, it's a one or a two. Yeah, uh, but again, just random, and it, this will hit all of your own stuff. Yes, which always hurts, man. Yeah, very scary. Yeah. Uh, number ten. This one's awesome. Uh, set up a unit of ten brimstone horrors in control on the in the current uh, in the control of the current player. Uh, the unit arrives via deep strike. So just get ten models. It's awesome. Another psyker. It's only uh, thirty Harold points, though. Sorry, what? It's thirty points free. Yeah. It's cool. okay. It's not a free Grab unit of anything objective. else. You know, it's not bad. I like it. Uh, number 11. Uh, so, again, we're getting less likely as we go higher. Uh, randomly select a character on the table. Excluding any of uh, the models with the Demon Special Rule, this model immediately takes a leadership check. If you uh, pass, you are fine. If you fail, you become a Herald of Zinch. But it's a straight leadership, not a 3-6 like the old one. Not a 3-6. Uh, the old uh, one is only Psychers as well, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, this, this one is, is all character. character. Yeah, so you can turn a Sergeant into a Herald, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the last one is uh, you detect one of the, the your oh sorry a demon of Zinch uh, character so more than likely your own uh, you take a leadership check if you fail you die bad uh, but if you pass you become a lord of change and cool. it's awesome that they added in the stipulation that you keep all your items your locus and you don't yeah. count as a kill point and you don't give up slay the warlord yes so that's a good thing that's for pretty sure. good. Um, and it, yeah, it could be awesome. Could be awesome. Could be bad. Because especially because it's randomly selected, right? I don't know. The player's turn is never mind. You choose. Oh wait. Yeah, no. it's not that bad. It's huh. it's actually it's yeah. better than all the other like the the other oh, yeah. ways in which you would get like a, a large monstrous creature. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Pretty cool overall. My thoughts on it would be um, if you have manipulation of the warp storm, so the Decurion or Fate Lever, the other table is probably better. Because you can pick and choose what you want to have, you're less likely to get the bad ones, you're more likely to get the good ones. If you're playing in a situation where you don't have Fate Weaver, if you don't have the Decurion, this one I think would actually be better. Yeah, that's my thoughts exactly. Yeah, because yeah, it's more random, but it it's doesn't safer. have less like terrible things that yeah. can happen to you. Yeah. yeah, if you're taking like a spammy, spammy list, and you're like, I don't want to take Fate Weaver, I don't want to take... I don't care. I don't have plus or minus one. This is the better table for sure. Damn it. And that this actually fits in with my cabal list that I was running at the last uh, last tournament. There, I would totally roll on this one before my other one. Hmm. Oh, you're running cabal with hounds and uh, the screamers, right? Screamers. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah, I like this one. This one. This one's cool. It's got some random stuff. It's got some powers that are just never going to come into play. Um, but at the same time, there are some some pretty good pretty good things. But without the manipulation, like the plus or minus one and the re-rolls, it's, it's still kind of... I guess you can do the single die re-roll. If you roll like a six, you can try for a second six. Yeah. But well, it's still... On the seven, though, the seven is a big deal. Like the most yeah. common number, you're getting D3 re-rolls for the rest of your turn. That's yeah. awesome. I think that helps the demons better. Because even if your, other, your opponent, what's he going to be making? Like re-rolling a save or two or something like that? But yeah. with, with, with like how... I guess how dangerous it is to be a demon player and how quick things can go down. Yeah. Like that that re-roll for like anything could be so huge, right? Yeah, yeah. Fate Weaver's re-roll is coveted. You know that as well as I do. Like you, oh, yeah. that thing, you save it for the last possible like necessary thing. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So 
Those are cool. my so that's about it for the demons. I think we covered everything. Uh, went a bit long-winded there. Uh, what's what's your final? So, so my final take on this, I already said it, is there's two to three formations that I would take out of this book and use in my existing demon army. And, but that's it. And the pink horror rules. It's all good. I I kind of use this as like a, a like nitpick. Pick the good stuff, and that's yep. it. I don't really think it. Like, could this have? If this wouldn't have came out, it, I don't think it has a huge impact. This section. But it has a, a slight improvement, I guess you could say. What's your takes? I, I like it. Um, similar to you know the the quick chat about uh, the the other book. You know, this is a great supplement, right? It's 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 adding on. It's adding some cool stuff for a bunch of people. And we got you know sev- several really good formations uh, that that come out of this, as well as some new toys. So I'm I really like it. Um, I think jury for me anyway is still out on the horrors. We'll see <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Um, I don't well, think... it can't be bad, right? So that horror change, I think, is pure good. It's just I think the internet and all these – everybody exploded with, like, it's too good. I think it's just, like, it's a, it's a nice improvement, right? But I don't oh, think yeah, it's no, it's, it's – I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a reasonable change to them. Um, my, my concern with it is really just how long it's going to take to do that. Like, the, g- games are already tight enough for time I, I, with most people that I don't really want to deal with one more thing slowing it down. Uh, but we will see. Right, the sky is not necessarily falling until it actually falls. Yeah, yeah, well, I have to agree. Uh, I did. I tried with the pink horrors, and it didn't actually slow me down at all. But I am, you know, you're a pretty a quick player, player, though. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different that way. Uh, I can see what you're saying, though. With, a, with somebody who wants to slow things down, it could be slowed down. Um, overall, though, yeah, I didn't mind it at all. I think it's, uh, I think it's a cool rule, like the split rule, and specifically, mm-hmm. um, very fluffy, which yep. is awesome. Um, but potentially abusable, but overall, I don't think it's going to be as as uh, as bad as the internet thinks it's going to be. I think it's been inflamed pretty heavily by a few people, which yeah. is fortunate. But uh, we'll see where things land. You know, we'll see where all the the dust settles. And and like, also, Riptide uh, didn't get this much hate, man. This is the most hate for something I've seen since I can't even think the last since that Jet Death Bite? from the Skies, Death, no, from, Death the from the Skies, the, the, yeah. the two powers. This That's is the, thing, right? the This seems like a meta shift to me. This means you need small units that can go and assault multiple things. This means that you can't just plink off pink horrors whenever you want. You have to kill them all, um, or you have to deal with that. This isn't a this isn't a game changer. This is a meta shift. Yeah, and a yeah. minor one at that. Because yeah. the things that are still good at killing pink horrors are still going to kill pink horrors, and they're going to kill the other stuff too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and also important note is that the same day this book came out, I think, or maybe the day after, uh, GW already did FAQ it with a couple important clarifications. Uh, the most important of which is that if a pink horror unit splits, the blue and or brimstone horrors do not keep objective secured if the pink horrors had it. That's true. Which solves like 90% of the problems right there. Very sad, actually. I really wanted it to be the other way. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> But, you know, it is what it is. It's still right? good. It's still good. Okay, so let's move on to Pimp My List. Pimp My um, List. So this is, we have an email from Ty. He's pretty new to 40K. He's working on an 800-point list for a Skitari and a Night Titan. At 800 points, you know, there's only so much you can put into it. So we're going to do our best to give pointers on war gear, unit shifting, um, and maybe what he can choose to expand. Because at 800 points, uh, his list is a Lord of War. He has a Night Crusader. 430 points. Yep. Whew. Yeah. Um, basically, he didn't give any melt upgrades, kept it fairly stock. Gatling Cannon and Battle Cannon, that's more than half the army. And then he basically takes Skitari Rangers with Arc Rifle, um, Galvanic Rifle, and um, that's what they basically come with. Then yep. he has Fast Attack. He has two units of Sidonian Dragoons. And Heavy Support, he has... Oninger Dune Crawler, 120 points, um, and that's about it. It's 800 points. Yeah, I think the first thing, and I think this is probably what you guys are going to say as well, is maybe swap out the knight for one of the cheaper variants. Um, it'll free up another unit. Uh, you will lose some of the shooting, which is unfortunate. But the knight at in 800 points is still a massive threat. Uh, so whether he's got the Gatling cannon or the um, or the rapid fire battle cannon. He's you know you're, you're getting a D close combat weapon instead, and between that and stomps, you know in games that small, that's really really hard to deal with. 
Um, and you're going to have a fair bit of shooting. You can fit into the list otherwise. So if you can free up, the, I think, what, about 80 points, give or take, 60, 80 points, um, it, it, it may, may help for some of the other stuff that you can do with the list. Dan, you have anything? Yeah, overall, I mean, it's a, it's a solid list in theory. You're taking minimum troops and you're taking that kind of thing. In a competitive sense, this could be quite good. Honestly, though, if you're playing 800 points, I'm going to kind of minorly assume you're probably just playing with your buds. Um, Night Titans are one of those things that will overpower your game heavily. In the end, it will be your knight killing everything. Um, yeah. So that would be something I would consider trimming down and kind of like kind of self-controlling a little bit. Maybe run something less harsh in a way, you know. Um, but it, if you're going to a tournament, yeah, bring a knight, kick some ass. It'll be fun. Um, the only thing it doesn't say is what kind of weapon your onager has. Um, I'm going to assume that yeah. means you have the standard pattern, like you have the neutron laser or something like that, which is pretty cool. Um, the rangers, I'm not a fan of rangers. I actually usually go for vanguard instead. I um, agree. Are vanguard I like, the one with the the plasma, or what, what? Which one of the vanguards get? Well, they don't have anything automatically, right? Um, the only thing they come with automatically is the rad rifles. Yes. So the, yes. Uh, on a six, they the do one, two ones. Yeah. And in combat, they drop your toughness by one, which is pretty cool. Yes. Um, the rangers do look awesome uh, with the galvanic rifles, but again, you're not going to... Well, they do have arc rifles, too, which is kind of cool, but the rangers can take that as well. Um, yeah, overall, man, I think they're. I think it's a cool list. The Night Titan is going to be the star of the show. It's the half the army, and at that low point value... The knight's going to dominate 90% of what you're going to fight. So if you want to go step on things, then bring the knight for sure. Um now let's, yeah, let's say expands. Let's say he wants to expand. What would you purchase, or what would you yeah, add? That sounds awesome. Expanding from there, um, I Let, would. That's say, what I was going to say. This is a good start for an ad mech list. A fantastic yeah, start for a list. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. You could you could easily you have the you have everything from the Skatari side, so you could work in some assassins, uh, some of the uh, Sakaran assassins. Those guys are awesome. Infiltrators are way too much fun. Um, yeah, even the Ross Doctors are cool so too. You could work in some uh, some actual ad mech. Like do the cult mech stuff. Yep. Take some destroyers and stuff. Um, beyond that, though, just some just some more troops probably maybe because they're up five mans, right? Yeah. Looks go like up to it, ten yeah. mans. You can go up to some more weapons, but some basic expansion from there wouldn't be bad. Anything, honestly, this is a good like a solid core to an army. You're gonna move up to fifteen hundred points. You're gonna add seven hundred points of stuff. Um, I would probably say stick with one knight. You probably don't need to jump with another knight. As cool as that would look. Um, I would probably just get some more units on the field because your knight's going to be alive and then everything else is going to be dead pretty yeah. fast. And th this yeah. is a, this is a really good starting point. I mean, I guess it's it's unavoidable, but this is a really good starting point for going into war complication as well, right? Because he needs oh, yeah. a unit, unit of vanguard, infiltrators, rust stalkers, and then two units of uh, the catafrons. Yep, yeah, yeah. If you want to go competitive and you want to jump into an, an army that takes a lot to play but is super good... Yeah, war complication is uh, you know skipping a jump away from this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's a lot of toys. I'd, I'd flush out the troops. Yes, yep. I get some more models. Yeah, yeah more more, more bodies on the table. I mean, the 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 dune crawlers are tough as nails. Like a lot of stuff in this is is tough to deal with legitimately, and it's got some some really good firepower. But yeah, I mean, as as Dan said, you're 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 lacking bodies on the table here, especially mm -hmm. with that knight in there taking up half the points. And at the smaller point levels, I would agree as well. The D close combat weapon, because you're it depends what you're going against. But if you're like, if if you're playing in that kind of environment where a Night Titan's acceptable at 800 points, I'm assuming the other guys are showing up with Wraith Knights. I'm assuming yeah. there's going to be other big stuff. Yeah. Fair. Um. You know, a Feel No Pain Star. Somebody might take a, a, a mini Feel No Pain Star. The D close combat le weapon just allows you to clean up. A lot of those units, and then fit like more to more toys on the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it kind of a lot because like your knight titan has like you can't sit back and shoot at eight hundred points when half your army's that guy. You can't sit there and shoot. You have to go. So that that D combat weapon will just allow you to just cut a few more heads off. Yeah. And I know when I when I play at point costs around there like a thousand points or under, I'm usually playing on a four by four table as well because it's with so few bodies, it's it's really tough to play on six by four. I think, or at oh, least I, I I have more fun almost. playing on four by four. With, with it's really hard to get away from that night on a four. Well, that's four. the thing, right? It's it's really tough. So it's almost to your advantage to to drop one of those guns for the for the close combat weapon. Yep, cool. So I hope that helped, man. Um, eight hundred points. It's it's tough for us. We play at eighteen fifty generally, um, and 
ultimately the best thing to do for you is to get up to that 1850 point and run the war convocation which is the formation that gives you all your upgrades for free um, you'll find that you'll get like a free six, seven hundred points, um, yeah. which makes a big deal. And the, the 1850 um, sounds intimidating, but keep, keep me honest here. I think War Convocation, just on its own, before you add any goodies, is just under 1500, right? Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're you're close. Like yeah. you could be close. Very a few close. boxes here and there. Buy one more of the starter sets or something like that, and you're very yep. close to a War yep. Con. Absolutely. Uh, cool. So we're going to move on to questions. We have some pre submitted questions. So if you're in the live chat, Send your questions now, and they'll get answered for Dan and Logan and myself. Dan will answer any question tonight, apparently. <laughs> so the first one is during your review, comment on the call or need for ITC nerf hammer on the split rule, and also whether or not you think we will see more demon games going unfinished. Well, we already answered the first one. We think it's too premature to nerf. Yes. And the second one, do you think it'll slow down the demon games? I think so. Yeah, I think I think slow, so. Slow, but but to me, slow players are slow players. They're going to be slow regardless. Yeah. You know, I think if it if I don't know. Just yeah, thoughts. I think that's still on the player side. I think that's I don't think that's going to be on a on a like a rules mechanics side of things. I don't think that's going to necessarily play into that. Um, if you're fat, like I like I, you can literally place them. They're not deep striking. They're not scattering. They're not doing anything. The, at the end of the phase, oh, I lost two pink cores. I put eight on. Yeah. And then you're done. Roll power. You roll one die. Right down. Done. Like it takes yeah. seconds, right? And that's usually on your opponent's turn anyway, so they're moving into their assault. Um, I agree. If you're if you're smart, it won't slow you down. If it if you, you know, if you're not ready to play the pink core army, that's a whole other thing. You yes. know. Uh, maybe maybe that's what we should say. So like an experienced player will be fine with it. Um, somebody who is not as experienced in a time sensitive format might not want to run 90 pink horrors. Yeah, I, I agree. I, the 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 other part of this is even even for folks who are used to playing demons, like look, looking at the time breakdown, if you're playing let let's say you've got I don't know, a couple a couple of heralds, you've got fate weaver, you got a couple other things. Uh you if you're not really on top of it or trying to move quickly, your pregame can probably take 15, 20 minutes, right? Rolling up your psychic powers, doing your deployment. So that's, you know, out of a two hour and 30 minute round, you know, you've got to get over to your table, you've got to put all your shit down, introduce your opponent, exchange lists, then you've got all your rolling for psychic powers, then you're deploying this stuff. It's it's another thing on top of that. But the thing that I, I will go on my soapbox about right now is if you are playing with horrors, Please, for the love of God, if you're summoning anything, have the shit with you right at the table. Don't reach down in your bag and unpack a bunch of stuff to get it out. Have it ready so you can go, I'm summoning, uh, you know, plague drones. Here's my plague drone. Done. Like, don't don't waste time on it. You, you need to be snappy because it's only, it's only hurting your opponent when you take up too much time. And that's not fair. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. You know, as much as you, you know... You might not be prepared all the time. It's definitely something to consider. Yeah, be conscious of it. I mean, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, be conscious of it. That's a great. You way. should have twenty blue horrors kind of sitting on your end of the board to just throw on. Yep. I think. Yeah, especially if yeah, if you're planning to run pinks, you should be prepared. Yeah. Um. So next one is brimstones better or worse than blues? So what's better, a blue horror or brimstone horror? Because I think this comes down to is you get the same amount of them, but they have different. Um, Kind of, they, they do the same thing, but one's cheaper, I guess, right? Yeah. I think the brimstones are better. Yeah. The reason I say that is because against almost all shooting in the game, both are, both are getting instant death, and the brimstones are going to give you... They're going to give up fewer kill points because they don't split, um, and they're the cheapest, like we talked about earlier, the cheapest access to warp charge. Yeah, I think I would actually probably say the opposite for okay. the same reasons that you said. <laughs> in the sense that I like that they can split. Um, I, I would I prefer the ability that they can split. Yeah, it's going to give them more kill points, but it's nice to have a unit turn into a unit. Very very cool for me. Um, and yeah, it's a little more points, but the tough two. Yeah, the, and the tough two won't play come into play ever. Yeah. Like again, your instant death thing it doesn't matter. The toughness doesn't matter at all. Uh, the brimstones do have the extra wounds for like you know shriek or dark Eldar or whatever, but again, it won't come into play ever. Um, yeah, I, I like that they can split though. I like the split mechanic. Um, so I would say blues. Okay, cool. Chris? Question. I, well, personally, I like blues. Okay. But to me, really, I don't care. Like to me, it's the the same. Yeah. Now it's like, what's better? Well, am I buying them in my list? I'm gonna buy brimstones over blues probably, 
but it depends where my thought process is. If, yeah, you can design like my thought. If, if I'm going for minimum point value, I'm going to buy the brimstones because that's sixty points for two yep. core obsec units. But it, so th there's a lot of factors in there. So the next one, question for Dan: Pink horrors are they at eleven, sixteen, or twenty now? Uh, I'm now still they going split. With I'm still going with eleven. I don't think that's going to change at all. Yeah, yeah. Because you lose the one horror, you gain a warp charge. Lose a warp charge, no difference. Yeah. yeah. yeah the sixteen is cool, but again, it's more points. I I still like the the free model thing. You know, um, I'm fine with eleven still. Um, best bunker for the nine heralds in the formation. Exalted flavor star nine heralds. Come on, man. That could work, that could work man. You're right. That could work. Um, yeah, the other list I've seen guarantees cursed earth. It guarantees like <laughs> with that many heralds, you're almost guaranteed like everything you want. Yeah. If you're gonna take nine heralds on discs, then yeah, I guess I might consider screamers instead. Honestly, just because you know, I guess they don't actually have more wounds. They have like these all the well, you take you wounds. take you take nine screamers, nine yeah. heralds on disc, nine exalted flamers. Oh god! Sweet Jesus! Are there enough points to do that? That sounds awesome, actually. Oh my god, you have to do that. This, now. Is, this is for apocalypse you can't, you games. Can't, you can't do nine, so you can't do the nine in that list. You right. can do five oh. because you need Kairos Fate Weaver for the Grimoire reroll. Sweet Jesus! Yeah, so actually, and I had a and I had a lot of change in that list. Um, so I think, <laughs> I think you could do six. I think you could do six or seven. That's pretty nuts. The other list I've seen floating around is Fate Weaver. Uh, Sky Host and nine heralds on discs, and just having like nine different units that are just flying all over the place, summoning shit like crazy. Actually, sounds awesome. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Uh, okay. I know this is a 40k show, but I'm getting back into Warhammer. How is the AOS doing tournament wise? It's <clears throat> growing. It's it's definitely growing. <clears throat> Pardon me. When, when AOS came out, everything took a massive nosedive. I don't think anybody's on the other side of that argument. Um, but with the introduction of the General's Handbook... So I guess, credit where credit's due, with all, all the comp systems that came out, especially South Coast GT, uh, and that evolution into the General's Handbook, and GW doing organized play now in general, uh, there's been a huge resurgence of it. Um, so, I mean, a year ago, we tried to run an Age of Sigmar tournament... And this is like talking about our place locally. Back in, I think it was in January, we tried to run an Age of Sigmar tournament. We had one person sign up. Uh, then at Capital City Bloodbath this year, we had 20 people, I think. Yeah, and, uh, and then there's there was tons of people that stopped by. So it's it's one of those things, like the numbers are down, so the tournaments are small. Like you go to yes. a, like a big Age of Sigmar tournament, is like 40 people. That's huge. Like 20 people is like normal, yeah. or 10 so the numbers are down, but as far as like the game, it's fantastic. With it's yes. fantastic as a tournament game. It's super balanced, super tactical. Um, like you never feel like you're completely out of the game. Generally, yeah. there's a few things you got to watch out for, like some of the teleport mechanics. If you're not ready for it, it can really screw you, screw with you. And some of the Sylvanith tricky stuff can ruin a tournament game. Like, you can cover the board in forests, and then you can teleport wherever you want. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a big deal. But other than that, like, for the most part, as far as a GW game goes, it's 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 all... To me, I like it better than 8th edition fantasy-wise for tournaments. I think it's more fun. Yeah. More tactical. I it, I definitely would have to agree with you. Like, it, I consider it like, okay, fantasy died. This is a new thing. We can't really... It's, un, it's unfair to compare it to the way it used to be. Because it's a totally different thing. It's a different beast. It's a new game. Um, so if we look at a new game that's, you know, two years old, it has a tournament scene with multiple events with an ITC thing. That yeah. is unheard of. No other game you could look at would be this big, right? Yep. Um, that might be backed because it's Games Workshop. That might be because um, it's actually a good system. In my opinion, it's totally a sick system. Way too much fun. Loads and loads of, like, great opportunity to grow. Yep. Um whether it's there yet, Easy. It's, not, it's not. It's not going to match up with 40k yet. No, um, but it does it have potential to do that. Totally, absolutely. And and just talking about tournaments again, like just to show how much this has grown. A year ago, like like we said, you know, there was no tournament scene for this. Uh, LVO has over 100 tickets sold for their Age of Sigmar oh. tournament that GW is running. It's, it's unbelievable. And it's going to. Yeah, if I wasn't and, playing championship and championship. That's where I would be. Nice. 
And 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 to to your point, and I think what what Chris uh, said in the background there is the barrier to entry is super low for this. If you want to pick up Age of Sigmar and learn it, all you need is the rules for your guys, which it is it's super easy to do, right? Like I I could go game with with my fiance and she could pick up the rules no problem like and it, with, no books is cheaper too it's like the yeah, cost to entry for books is the huge thing too yes yeah for 40K, it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 great and like so the one thing about like so 40k if you're like a top player you can still lose to like anybody whereas like age of sigmar has that like eighth edition feel where like if you're good, you're in control the whole game. So it's kind of weird. Like 40k, sometimes I feel like I lose control. Like t- like like something will happen, you'll lose control turn three, and then you'll have to try to get control back into the game because you know, buddy, just one last cannon blows up your. La- That's a bad example. Blows up your land raider, right? Like turn one, like you're out of control. Whereas Sigmar is very much like you know everything kind of moves slower. There's not a lot of like fast mobility, and if there is. Yeah. It's like one shot, and then you're stuck there. Or once, a lot of once per game ability, yeah. so you can mitigate them. I don't know so that pretty... that double turn mechanic though. Damn that that I like, love it. Though. When you get double turned though, if you get double turned, it is rough. Like you yeah. like, okay, I don't get to play for a while, and all my stuff's gonna die. But at least you do get a side like the the other side of it where you get two turns back. So that's something. Um, but. I don't know. It's, that's yeah. a, that, I can see that being a loss of control pretty quick. That one I think it is allo- pretty rough. It allows you to pick the end of the game. Like it, so, like whereas in 40k, an Eldar guy, I'm going to go second. I know I got last turn. I'm going to jump. So they had to add like a random game length mechanic. This mm-hmm. allows you to be like, well, there's a fifth turn because every turn is random. Mm-hmm. And then the wicked part too is, is if you finish deploying first, you get to pick who goes first or second. So you can either have first turn and 0% chance at a double turn or fifty percent chance at double turn. So, yeah. Now yeah. I remember seeing from the, uh, I think it was the GW tournament that happened not too long ago, or or maybe it was it was one of the more recent ones. It, it, there there was a breakdown of how how impactful the double turn is, and I as I recall reading, I have to find this. I'll try to find it for the next podcast. But it, it was pr- a pretty significant win ratio for people who got the double turn on their first turn, like 70 percent went into a game win. Now, I think that more than game mechanics, I think that speaks to player inexperience on how to deal with the double turn. Um, Once you are capable, like once you, it's kind of like one of those things, right, with like any game like this, once you get the double turn sprung on you and you just get messed up by it, you're going to pay attention to it next time. Yeah. And not going to suffer as badly the next time. But at the same time, it is a scary mechanic, and it is incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. So the double the double turn to the one thing you really got to think about is, um, you you don't want to take units that are slow and kind of leave you out there. So a lot of the big infantry blobs and stuff like they suffer the most. Like if you have a fast enough unit, they can get in there, or they can run away. Or if you have shooting, you can kind of chill and let them come to you. But you got to plan for the double turn in list building. You can't just plan mm-hmm. for it on the table. You have to. You have to plan for it. So you have to you have to be able to speed bump people. You have to have in your list a unit that can just go in front of your army and be like, well, if you get the double turn and you're playing ogres, you're just going to kill this unit of marauders, and the rest of my army is going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. You just have to but, do that. You know, this whole conversation kind of does go back to our main point and the fact that there is an AOS tournament scene. Yes. And while there's a whole meta we get to talk about for five minutes, it means that there is a tournament scene there, which is quite cool. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Chess clocks, yay or nay? We're flogging the dead horse at this point. I, I always vote yes to this. I've I've made my reasons clear a billion times. I, I uh, played chess clocks there. It's not that bad. It's uh, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah, it's fair. Um, what what's your take on pink horrors sprayed as blue as blue horrors, or do you need blue horror models? Well, first off, the best uh, flavor of Perrier is obviously not drinking Perrier. Oh, get off the show. <laughs> I love Perrier. It's so good. Perrier's best fantastic. flavor is grapefruit. No yeah. man, lemon lime. So now we can go pinks, painted as blues. Do you like that? Do you yeah, think that I'm people should that. buy blue horrors? That's fine with me. Um, it's only uh, it's only a detriment to the the pe- person using the the pink horror proxies. So I, I'm fine with that. I'm I'm not a fan. That said, I think there is 
I've been swayed. There, there is some wiggle room for the time being, given that you cannot actually buy these models. Yeah, okay, yeah I guess that's that'd be what, one, Once they are out, this is a hard no for me, though. No, no, no. Like casual games, sure, proxy all you want, but don't don't come to my tournaments and proxy models, please. Dude, I'm gonna call you on that next time I come to one of your tournaments. I have them all, bro. I'm like, I'm probably the only one in Eastern Ontario with actual blue horse. The only more than, only like, person that would buy. Nine chariots. You need them, off, bro. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. <laughs> yep. Okay, so then, what do you guys think of the Blood Angels, Archangels, Demi Company, Deep Strike list rolling for reserves on turn one? I like it. I like reserves coming in turn one. That's one of the Black Legion things too. Actually, you get reserves on turn one, and your Warlord auto passes his yep. reserve roll on turn one. Turn one reserves means you're null deploying, means you're countering all the heavy alpha strikes. Love it. Yeah. Well, you could even... So, Black Legion, uh, you, you can take those Terminator formations, the really good ones now, where you get to shoot twice, essentially. Yeah. So, Correct. you get to shoot before Interceptor. So, you got to think about the Tau player. You're like, okay, bro, you go first. Uh, you can shoot nothing, literally. And then, bang, 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 all my Terminators come in, turn one. And then, you take your Warlords unit. You could even do something crazy, like, I don't know, like Abaddon and his... Death Star unit of 10 dudes with like 10 plasma guns and then they all get like shit on twos. Yeah. Oh man, you could come in and nuke some stuff, dude. Man, no, I totally agree. I think that that is the list that I'm currently like writing in my head is the Raptor Talon thingy and the uh, the Terminators. Oh, I was all Black Legion. Black Legion was my first actual like competitive army. I played the hell out of that in 5th edition. I can't wait to try that again. The Terminator Deep Strike, Raptor Deep Strike thing sounds amazing. So, but yeah, so, but to go back to the um, Blood Angels, it's good. They come in, they assault, you know, you just got to, you got to write the list so that you're able to null deploy and come in and actually inflict damage instead of coming in and getting shot and killed. Yeah. And you, you should try to set yourself up to get the charge. So what I like to think of is you, you end up taking probably two Inquisitors and six to nine Servo Skulls, and then you cover the board so you only scattered 1d6 less. And then all your Blood Angels come in right in his grill and you're guaranteed a whole bunch of charges. I think that's one thing a lot of people overlook. Like, what's, what's wrong with spending 70 points on six skulls so that the guy's screwed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Should I go Vanguards or Stern Guards or a mix? For, is this in reference to the Archangel Demi yeah. Company? Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably the Stern Guard. I like Stern Guard. I'm a big fan of Stern Guard. Yeah. Um, and then, last question. What is your counter in a demon list for a Riptide Wing? <sighs> it's hard, man. Uh, Riptide Wing's probably the hardest thing to deal with with the demon army because yeah. they can shoot down Kairos like that. They can shoot, shoot down any... Magnus even. Like, yeah. um, if, if you come in with your any kind of Exalted Star or Screamer Star and you fail your Grimoire, it's gone in a turn. Yeah. Um, what else can it do? So, like, a good counter that I found was um, I've had good luck with running my eight corn dog units, my nine screamer units, and I just touch them. Yep. Just mm -hmm. push everything as fast as I can at them, one unit into each, and then and that's game. it. Yep. And then you just, just chill, the and then try to win on objectives. Um, killing them is really hard because a good player, like, it, let's say you have, like, a, like, some kind of scream spam or something, like... He's just going to get his three plus invulnerable saves so you can't kill his dudes. It's yeah. like Rip, Riptide Wing is probably the number one counter to demons right now. It's a fantastic unit. It's one of the best for sure. Um, the only thing, the only real tactic that I've encountered that's great is forcing them to intercept because then they're not double firing hailfire ridiculousness. Yeah, that's if you can force them to intercept onto units that are on objectives or something that can be halfway decent, but it is is painful. The one thing that is a possibility now is the it, I was I was thinking about the if you mark one of the sorcerers let's say out of a uh, cabal star with slanesh right um, you can um, hit the unit with a blind check which is kind of cool um, or you can lower the weapon skill and ballista skill which is also pretty cool yeah that sorcerer's not going to be able to join that unit though. Oh no, you still you still be able to, yeah. right? Cause be, yeah, because they're you just wouldn't be able, right because you don't run a chaos order or anything in yours. You just run the five sorcerers, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. 
But again, at the same time, it's 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 a hard it's a hard thing. At that point, you're playing two objectives. You're playing to plink a few wounds off a riptide. Uh, if you're playing Flying Circus, it's a different story. You can shriek them. You can D them. That kind of thing. But at the moment, that's not exactly in meta. It might be soon, but it's not in meta. And one thing we didn't talk about: once it's in meta, they're going to take Skyfire. And yes, then you're exactly. Bumped. Start yes. taking Sky Rays again. Um, the, when you play against Tau, you just have to appreciate that they're just going to ignore the rules. They're just like <laughs> pretty much, stuff, just, they, they don't care. They don't care at all. Pretty so just much. pay attention to that. And now, now, the one thing we didn't demon... talk about though is for the Zinch uh, psychic powers. Now, the six mm -hmm. spell is is the Shroud of Deceit. Uh, basically, it's now classified as a malediction, but it's exactly the same spell. Um, and it's still still warp charge three, I think. But you now have access to that outside of the cabal, which yeah, is yeah. really that will good. That will scare cow players of keeping things off the board for sure. Yeah, yeah. The one thing that I so I've tried it a few times now, where I just kind of like chill back out of range with my stuff and try to play objectives. I personally believe the best thing to do is just deep strike everything fairly close to the tau's face, um, and then, as Dan said, he's going to intercept four of your units and kill them. And that's just the way it's going to be, but it's better than eight units. Yeah. Or six units. It depends how many he has, right? If he has three units, it's... But... Yep. No, it's, it's tough. I mean, playing Tau is always going to be a tough thing, but it's always like a turn one, turn two, you take heavy casualties. Turn three, turn four, if you can survive, you will be able to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really tough. Um, anyway, so that's good. We're going to have to cut it there. We're getting really long. Um, we did forget to do the lore review, so we'll have to throw that into our next show. We'll do a lore review. We'll bring that segment back because now we have one to do. Yep. Uh, so worked out in the end, man. Woo! So thanks, guys, for listening and watching. Um, this will be up on iTunes soon. Um, as for that, for feedback, you can email me, canhammer.podcast at gmail.com. Our website is oneplusarmor.com for more information. You can also view our YouTube page and things like that there. And our Patreon page is www.patreon slash oneplusarmor. It's patreon.com slash patreon one plus armor. Plus armor. Yep. Um, then that supports the YouTube side of it. Uh, so check that out. Um, thanks for joining us, Dan. Thanks yeah, for joining me as usual, thanks. Logan. Yep. Thanks for joining us. And thanks everyone uh, joining us on uh, on Twitch. Have a good night. Bye.